just the words he most passion for tradition, winning at national championships. The Tide already owned five national titles when the legendary Bear Bryant and his 1961 team captured the first of six national crowns. Next up was Gene Stallings and his undefeated team from 1992. Even recently, the tradition continued at Bama, winning their 21st SEC championship. Last year was a season of hard knocks, turning the tide as job number one for Dennis Franchoni. The Vanderbilt cheerleaders and the Vanderbilt fans are always excited when the Crimson Tide train comes a rolling into Nashville. And that is our matchup today. Two teams looking for their first win of the 2001 campaign. Alabama and Vanderbilt coming your way on a doubleheader day on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Neal alongside my partner, Charles Davis. And Charles, I guess this is a good day for, Van uh, for Alabama because they get to concentrate on football. Certainly the last couple of days, it's been tough in Tuscaloosa as the NCAA has notified Alabama that they are officially looking into that program for some possible violations. Of course, this will be a long, drawn-out process. Today, they focus on football. None of these players, none of these coaches had anything to do with what's going on. So now they turn to Tyler Watt, the guy who has to lead them to victory. And he did a great job last week. Even though they didn't win against UCLA, Tyler Watts did lead the way. He has great running ability, and he can throw the football. We'll see him right here last year against Vanderbilt, running the option for a touchdown, a game that moved him into the number one spot, the starting quarterback for Alabama before he was hurt later. And then against UCLA, a big pass to Antonio Carter, a touchdown pass. And Tyler Watts is a guy who has shown poise. Look at how the snap goes up over his head. He stays with it. And now look at the concentration, Dave. Watch it all the way downfield, watching the touchdown pass to Carter. Yeah, and he also looks like he's got a good, positive Freddie Millens involved in that offense as well. Well, let's turn the page and talk about Vanderbilt. Of course, they got upset by Middle Tennessee State, and again, they felt they should have won. But nonetheless, their offense looked like they were hitting on all cylinders. Greg Zolman, Dan Stricker, MJ Garrett, the whole crew seemed to be rolling. Seemed to be in midseason form. Steve Crosby, the offense coordinator, loves his trio of guys. Dan Stricker on the left, a great year last year. Greg Zolman, an, a great year also throwing the football, and they look better than ever. But MJ Garrett is the wild card. Last week, eight catches, 219 yards, but he had a separated shoulder they suffered in the second half of that game. He's questionable coming in, but we hear that he's going to give it a go, Dave. There are a lot of Crimson Tide fans, as usual, on the road. These two teams trying to get it together, picking up their first win. They have gotten it together out in the parking lot. It's football day on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Stay with us, folks. Kickoff is coming your way after this. SEC football is being brought to you by Alltel. Alltel Total Freedom Plans give you nationwide calling with no roaming or long distance charges. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Ice House, you've got style all your own. Ice House style, enjoy. By Pizza Hut, so much variety. The best pizzas under one roof. And by Chevy. The cars millions of people depend on every day. We'll be there. Let's throw it quickly down to Dave Baker as the Vanderbilt head coach with him. Thanks, Dave. Woody, you said you wanted to get more involved in that defense. You got the chart in your hand. You win the toss, and you put well, the defense Dave, on the I'm field. back coaching right now, and I love it. I'm back involved, and I really missed that part of it. Looking forward to getting better and better each week. More aggressive on that defense today? Well, they, they, you know, they run that option. You know, you, you've got to be very sound in what you do and what you call. Uh, hopefully our players will respond and get aggressive themselves. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank we you. appreciate it. Back up to you, David. All right, Dave Baker. We will check in with you throughout the course of the game. I'm Dave Neal alongside Charles Davis. Glad you could join us on game one of a double dip coming your way on Jefferson Pilot Sports. We start off with Alabama 0-1 against Vanderbilt. Also 0-1, two teams trying to rebound from what were disappointing openers. And I mean disappointing for Alabama because they committed some mistakes. They felt cost them the football game. 15 penalties. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt dropped nine passes. They were also missed roughly 25 tackles against Middle Tennessee State. So certainly two teams that uh, have been under the gun somewhat the last week of practice. Yeah, the old cliche among coaches is that to make your most improvement between game one and game two. Dennis Franchoni wants more discipline out of his team to cut down on the 15 penalties they had last week. He expects that to happen today. Woody Woodenhofer, you just heard him. He's back coaching, calling all the signals on defense. He's ready to go today, and he hopes his defense is too. 
There is Freddie Millens who will return the opening kickoff. Vanderbilt won the toss, but they deferred their option to the second half. Alabama will receive Jimmy Stover to kick off for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Jimmy Stover, just a walk-on, showed up on the doorstep of Vanderbilt's coach Woody Woodenhofer. Actually made his first appearance in a college game just last week. And Stover sends an end over end down to about the six, and that is where Millens will take it. Freddie tripped up at the 22-yard line. That's where the Tide will take over. Lou Thomas on the stop for the Commodores. Well, this will be a look at Tyler Watts. And he takes over an Alabama offense that will run the option today. And, of course, there are a lot of variables that go into that option. But Tyler did a nice job. Coaches, as Charles has talked about, very happy with the way Tyler ran this football team last week. He has completed 56% of his passes over his career, although limited somewhat a year ago due to injuries. Single setback goes to Ahmad Galloway. Galloway close to the first down. And here's a look at our Chevrolet starting lineups. The Chevy lineups focus on Freddie Millens. Of course, he is off to a good start. Over 200 total yards last week against UCLA. Also, take a look at that offensive line. Very young, specifically on the right-hand side of the football with Justin Smiley, Wesley Britt, a couple of redshirt freshmen in that group. It was a first down. Shotgun formation for Alabama. Off. Given to Galloway. Bruner on the stop. Gets a couple. Well, here's that Chevy Vanderbilt defensive starting lineup. Chuck Losey, four tackles against Middle Tennessee State, but he comes back after missing the entire season last year after breaking an ankle. Nate Morrow, a guy to keep an eye on. This linebacking core has uh, some pretty good potential. They did not show it. The coach is a little disappointed in how that group performed last week, but they like the fact that they're all good athletes, and the secondary will be tested today by a good core of receivers from Alabama. Second down and seven. Here's the option. The pitch is to Galloway. He cuts it back inside. Ahmad near the midfield strike. Out around the 49, Kendall. Excuse me, Chuck Losey on the stop. Yeah, right away you saw what Woody Woodenhopper's worried about in pregame, the option. You have to have responsibilities. Who has quarterback? Who has pitch man? Number 23, Harold Lurcius, coming up from the secondary for Vanderbilt. Didn't get there fast enough to get the pitch man, Ahmad Galloway. He was able to get the cut back and pick up good yardage. First down and 10. Little play action. Watts dumps it off to his tight end, Terry Jones, who barrels his way down to the Vanderbilt 33-yard line. Terry Jones making an impact. Terry suffered an injury last year for South Carolina and missed the latter part of the season. You see, you see Watts rolling out. Terry Jones coming out from the tight end position. Freddie Millen's cleared all the way downfield, Dave Neal. That's what opened it up for Terry Jones. Easy pitch and catch for Tyler Watts to Terry Jones, and they want to utilize that big horse, a big-time target. Four wide receivers, shotgun formation for Watts. We will see numerous formations out of Alabama. One of the things Coach Fran loves to implement. Quick hitter to the outside, Antonio Carter. Gets it inside the 30 to around the 29-yard line. Hillenmeyer, the outside linebacker on the stop. Hunter's Hillenmeyer, a guy that has to replace Matt Stewart, who went on to the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. That's a, a big hole to fill. And really, when you consider the fact Vanderbilt lost Jamie Winborn, who's off in the NFL, and Matt Stewart, those are some big gaps to fill. I don't know that you can necessarily do that in two weeks. Yeah, very tough to do, but Woody Woodenhopper did tell us yesterday that he thinks Hunter Hillenmeyer is a better athlete than Matt Stewart, so he has the potential to get it done. Watts under pressure. Dodges a couple of tackles, picks up about a yard. Losey on the stop. Pressure came from Pat Bruner up the middle. Bruner, the guy that's uh, taking over for Jamie Winborn. Yeah, credit Woody Woodenhopper's defense with that, with that nice stop there because the secondary covered three levels for Alabama. They ran one guy all the way downfield deep, Dave. They ran a second guy at an intermediate depth about 15 yards. Third guy short at five. All three men were covered. That allowed the line to get to the quarterback. You take a chance here, Charles, if you're Vanderbilt defensively on third down and seven. Load up and get them. Load up and get them. Here they come. 
quick hitter up to Sam Collins. Does not connect. Flag is down. Looks like Wesley Britt, maybe the right tackle, got a little head start. I'm sure Vanderbilt will obviously decline that and bring up fourth down from about the 29 and a half yard line. Yeah, that'd be a long field goal attempt. Steve Landis, our referee. Jim Allison, Bob Hicks, Paul Patrisco, Jim Jumper, Lynn Harrington, Don Smith Jr. our officials today. And that's the first penalty of the afternoon against Alabama. Of course, 15 of those last week. And it appears that uh, Bandy, Bandy took it, Dave. So they're going to turn into a third and 11, third and 12. Woody Woodenhofer trying to play field position is what he's trying to do. I'm not sure you want to give them another shot. But this type of pass attack with Millens and Carter, Jason McGadley, they have a lot of weapons. Looks like four wide receivers for Alabama now. It's third down and 12. Shotgun, Watts. Under pressure, sack at the 44-yard line. Wally Conyers brings him down. The senior out of Atlanta, Georgia. The gamble works. Yeah, not only did they play field position, but everyone covered in the secondary. Wally Conyers, number 66, hesitated coming because he knows Tyler Watts' his running ability, Dave. But what he did is what Woody Woodenhofer wants his guys to do. Break down, get under control, then go make the play. Then you don't miss a, miss a tackle. Lane Beard in the punt. But, Charles, I think that gave the – that's one of those things that can give your defense some confidence. Big-time confidence there because Woody told them, it's okay, we're going to take the penalty because I believe in you. That will only help them today. Bearden's punt down to Hatcher calls for a fair catch right at the 10-yard line. So Vanderbilt backed up a little bit. Good-looking drive early on for Alabama, but it stalls. They've got Vanderbilt pin. They will take over with their first position. We'll return to Nashville right after this. Scoreless, 10.40 to go in the first quarter from Nashville, Tennessee. Vanderbilt gets their first crack at it. Greg Zolman. The senior, the fifth-year senior, who has had a remarkable career as a Vanderbilt quarterback, could finish here holding nearly every passing mark if he has a solid season, opened up with a 300-yard day against Middle Tennessee State. And Vanderbilt pinned back at their 10-yard line, will open up with three wide receivers in the shotgun formation. Empty set. Williams in motion. Zolman throws. Quick strike. It's Dan Stricker. That picks up about nine out near the 20. Herschel Bolden on the stop. Flag is down on the near sideline. Somebody might have got a head start. Wonder if the running back coming in motion might have gone to the line of scrimmage a little bit too fast. Turned up field. A little excited to get, get the game started. Bandy coming out in the gold jerseys today. They wore white in the first game against Middle Tennessee, trying to beat the Heat a little bit. That didn't work. That didn't work, so now you try gold. <laughs> right. and, they, and they still have the black jerseys to wear at home, too. Well, you know what they call it, offensive pass interference day because they double screened to bring Dan Stricker inside on a wide receiver screen. And they called it for almost a pick. There's Steve Crosby, the offensive coordinator, said that uh, he's got nothing to lose. He's going to gamble some today. Yeah, he came to that realization last year in the middle of the Tennessee game and said, you know, might as well fire our bullets if we're going down. Jeff Rutledge, normally up high, the quarterback coach for the Commodores, the former Alabama quarterback, down on the sidelines today. Some changes going on on that uh, Vanderbilt staff to get it, I guess, cranked up. Definite sense of urgency, Dave, amongst all of them. A lot of movement on the right side of the line. Tom Simone, the tight end, might have jumped, and that'll move Vanderbilt back a little bit further. You know, it's difficult at the beginning of a game, Dave, when you're all hyped up and amped up. It's holding your position. They will move them back to the two-and-a-half-yard line. You notice Vanderbilt came out, lined up. You saw that. Then they, went, they shifted. Then they went in motion. It's a long time to kind of hold your water when you're ready to play right, right at the beginning of the game. Sometimes it's better just come out, get into some plays early, let the guys settle down before you get to a lot of movement and shifting. Hold your water. <laughs> we'll analyze that later on. <laughs> we'll talk about that on a break. Here we go. This is a tough, tough situation for Zolman and company. He stands in the end zone. Play goes nowhere. Nezi Asanalu was the receiver. That'll bring up second down. Let's take a look at our Chevy Vanderbilt. 
offensive starting lineups. MJ Garrett had a huge day. Just a couple of yards shy of a school record in terms of receiving yards. Has a bum shoulder. He is standing on the sidelines and will try to give it a go today. The offensive line is a pretty good one. Jamie Byron making his 12th consecutive start at center. Duncan Cave is a good one as well. Handoff goes to Rodney Williams. That offensive line drives the Alabama front back a few yards. That'll bring up a long third down. The Chevy Crimson Tide defense looks like this, and they are good up front. They are big and fast and mean. Salim Rashid trying to make his junior campaign as good as the first two years. This guy has All-American written all over him. In the secondary, they had to replace basically four guys that got the majority of the starts a year ago, but that's still a pretty good group. I think they got some solid athletes in that Alabama secondary. There was a look at Salim Rashid. Stricker right there, Dave. That's the guy you want to look for. They swing it. Near side. Hatcher out over the 30. What a big move by Ronald Hatcher. Reggie Miles runs him out of bounds. That'll be a big first down. It was third down and 12, and they pick it up. Gain of 22. You wonder about Vanderbilt throwing so many short passes to start the game with Alabama sucking up on them. But here's what happens. If you miss a tackle, which Vanderbilt did a lot of last right here, miss tackle. He missed the tackle, it allows for a big play. Ronald Hatcher, a running back who's been moved to wide receiver, makes the big move on Brooks Daniels, number 18, the outside linebacker, picks up the first down. Williams might have lost a yard. Salim Rashid steps in there. Rashid had eight total tackles in the opener and one tackle for loss. What a freshman season. He burst onto the scene and had 84 total tackles in 99. Dropped off a few last season. And not all his fault. A lot of injuries on the defensive front. Kendall Moore had missed the whole season. Kenny King missed the last four games with a bad shoulder. Tough to move as a linebacker when you don't have guys to keep the offensive linemen off of you. Second down and a fraction over 10 yards to go. High snap. Williams just pounded behind the line of scrimmage by Jarrett Johnson, the junior out of Chiefland, Florida. Williams, an interesting story. Ray Perkins was initially slated to be their starting tailback this year, but he ran into uh, some honor code violations here at the university and was dismissed from the university. Rodney Williams made a strong showing in spring, continued to develop in the fall. Of course, he had a great freshman season yes. and kind of got lost in the shuffle the last couple of years, Charles, but he's got a lot of tools. Oh, he does, almost like Gabe Kaplan and welcome back. You know, you want to look back up, welcome back Rodney Williams, and he's played well so far. Zolman, wide open receiver. Mathena first down Commodores. Bolden runs him out of bounds, and this no huddle quick strike attack is working after the gain of 13. Yeah, you don't have a lot of running plays, but watch how Vanderbilt just runs down the middle of the field and then washes things out from Mathena number 31. Three receivers to one side, Dave. The first two go to the inside. And then the third guy goes out, Jason Mathena, a freshman from Copperas Cove, Texas. It's his first catch in collegial ball. 4-4 speed by Mathena. He gets the corner and pretty much puts six on the board. There's Mathena in motion. And they pitch it to Mathena. Breaks a tackle, gets about eight yards. A nice looking drive from Vanderbilt that started at their own two and a half. Yeah, because they kept putting themselves back there. They had the ball in about the 10. Had a missed tackle on this play by Salim Rashid. You're not going to see this very often. They ran inside because they called Athena back in short motion. See right there, number 11? There he is, Salim Rashid. You're not going to see that very often, Dave. Woody Woodenhofer said his defense last week didn't break down and get into good hitting position. That time, Salim Rashid was not in good hitting position. But you won't see that very often. The kid, is uh, he's an unbelievable talent and usually plays under control. Out of Birmingham, Alabama. Nice little option play. Mathena picks up the first down. Hey, Steve Crosby, what are you doing? Are we seeing the kitchen sink? Huh? He's going into Grandma's recipe book. He's breaking it all out early, Dave. We are seeing every formation, every motion, and every move. Fink inside the number two, right there, Rodney Williams. And then it's an option to the wide receiver. That wasn't a running back. It was a wide receiver. They brought in short motion and put him in position for the option. Steve Crosby breaking it all out early. 
Well, we knew Mathena would see some work today, but the true freshman I didn't think would be this big of a factor. Flag down near side. Williams tripped up at the 38-yard line. Miles came flying in. It looked as though Mathena might have jumped across the line of scrimmage. Notice he wasn't very sure about his lineup, too, Dave. He wasn't sure where he was on the line, off the line, and you'll see that out of a freshman, and you know how excited he's got to be, his first true action in college football. That'll move Vanderbilt back. He called a legal shift was, was the signal there. That's probably Mathena trying to get himself set. But we'll, give, we'll forgive him that one, I'm sure, with the big play capability he's showing already. Alabama gave up just a total of 291 yards versus UCLA last week. And they looked impressive. Uh, and the pen penalties hurt them, as you mentioned at the top, 15 penalties. There are also four loose balls in that game, Dave, that Alabama didn't come up with any of them. UCLA got every single one of them. Those types of plays hurt you, too. Zolman. Overthrew Chris Young. That play looked like it was set up nicely. Chris Young's a guy they're waiting to break out. Just waiting. Got all the talent in the world. Here's a look at Pizza Hut scoreboard. Texas over North Carolina. Virginia Tech. Fresno State in Wisconsin. How about those Bulldogs? Ohio State all over Akron. Yeah, see how the Bruins. Yeah, making a move back east again for the second week in a row. Fake reverse. Lou Thomas still shy of the original line of scrimmage, which is just across the 41-yard line. Moorhead and Monroe on the stop. Brooks Daniel also involved. Look at all this motion. You've got a fake reverse here, and then he's going to throw a screen to the inside to Lou Thomas, number four. Alabama covered that very, very well. Brooks Daniel, number 18, stayed and played off of the block, made the initial hit. There's Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, the former head football coach at the University of North Carolina. Rodney Williams back in the game. Three receivers to the right. Zolman has a wide open Mathena. Another first down. Mathena breaks a tackle, fumbles out of bounds, but he gets to the 21 of Alabama. Salim Rashid finally brings him down. The tie have been fooled a couple of times on that play. You keep thinking that Vanderbilt has to push them deep to get some room, but what's happening is receivers are coming here, and that leaves the receiver open out to the right. When the receivers go inside, Alabama's not just in Herschel Bolden, number 25, missed the tackle. Salim Rashid had to come from his linebacker position downfield to make the play. Missed tackles in one-on-one -on -one open space situations create big plays, Dave. That's why secondary guys have to be excellent tacklers in open field because oftentimes you are out in space. Simona tied it in motion, but they run the reverse bobble, picked up around the corner. It's Stricker inside the 10. When it's going your way, it's going your way. A gain of 11. This, get, this has a, a chance of being a bigger play, but watch the bobble by Stricker. The handoff was excellent. That wasn't the problem. He had it tucked away. That was fine. For some reason, he probably squeezed it a little too tight, Dave, and the ball comes out. He's just lucky that the grass acted as AstroTurf, and the ball bounced back up to it. Play could have gone bigger if he handled it cleanly. This drive started at the Vanderbilt two-and-a-half-yard line. Stricker again, inside the five to about the four. Darius Gilbert from his middle linebacking spot. Alabama already getting substitutes into the game, Dave. Darius Gilbert didn't start the game, but this no huddle offense, fast break style of Vanderbilt has him trying to get some people in to get them a rest. Let me make my first bold statement right here. You see Alabama last week inside the 20, you know, 50% scoring. Vanderbilt has to get a touchdown on this drive. You don't throw all these plays, formations, and moves and not score a touchdown and consider it a success. Couple of tight ends. Luke Thomas, number four in the game. The handoff goes to Thomas. He takes it to the three, and that'll bring up third and goal. Reggie Miles, one of numerous 
Crimson Helmets. In on the stop. And there's the weakness of running a one-back shotgun offense. You only have a couple of running plays. You have a sweep, and you have an inside handoff. And that's about it. So you're limited there. Alabama knows that's what you're limited to doing. Unless you're going to be willing to throw the football here, which you know Vanderbilt is willing to do, your inside handoffs probably have a tough time of making it against goal line situations. Zolman rolls. Zolman looking, looking, fires, nearly picked off. Oh, he hit an Alabama defender right in the chest. That was Charles Jones, number 20 down there. Yeah, that was Charles. Hit, him. hit Charles right in the chest. Yeah, yeah, watch number 20 right here. He could be a hero on this play. Nice job playing the receiver and then watch him fold back to the inside, reading Greg Solman's eyes the whole way. Now, you see him jump up and down. That's nice to show that emotion, but coaches, that drives him crazy. What they want is for him to catch the football. Then the drive ended and no points given up. Vanderbilt still has a chance to kick a field goal, but that has to be a disappointment to them, Dave, after this long drive. Here's Chuck Bellino. Had one opportunity last week with a bad snap. The left footer splits the uprights. It is good. Vanderbilt marches down the field. They have a couple of third down conversions. And they strike with a field goal. We've got 3.09 remaining in the first quarter from Nashville. It's the tide and the doors. We'll be back after a word from your local station. A 20-yard Chuck Polino field goal gives Woody Woodenhofer and company a 3-0 lead in the first quarter. Dennis Franchoni. Saw his offense move the ball quite well, but stumbled down around the Vanderbilt 30. Freddie Millens will return the kick, but here's that Vanderbilt scoring drive. It goes 87 yards and took up seven and a half minutes, which has got to be good news for that Vanderbilt defense. Stover puts a foot into it. Millens a yard deep in his end zone. Freddie Millens. Millens tries to get to the outside and stumbles at the 38. Oh, Charles, had he kept it on the on the far side, it looked like he might have been able to take it. Yeah, I think the first stumble threw him off a little bit and made him come back to the other side. Good blocking. You'll see the Alabama, Antonio Carter, number two, leading Alabama forward wall. Gives him a couple good blocks, and he knows how to read the holes. That stumble right there, Dave, that little stop action, instead of keeping it left, he brought it back right, ran out of room, but still an excellent return. Averaged 37 and a half yards in the return game last week against UCLA. Off to a great start today. Freddie holding that left knee, that left maybe the top half of that calf. But a 39-yard return puts Alabama in pretty good position. Galloway with a handoff. He gains six. Matt Bruner on the stop for the Commodores. Galloway had a big, big game a year ago against this Vanderbilt defense. He ran for 172 yards, had a 79-yard touchdown run. Woody Woodenhofer getting a, having Dino Felino on his right, signaling in the defenses to his to his stop troops. Alabama big and strong in the forward wall. Woody expected them to come out and line up and try and run over him. Don't see much change in that so far. Couple of tight ends in the game for the tie. Little play action. Looking for Sam Collins down the middle. Overthrows his receiver, and they're going to throw a flag. Justin Gibbony might have bumped him. Okay, let my bias kick in right away. It's a defensive back, so I think, okay, good play. <laughs> you know, here's the problem. The receiver, instead of running straight up the field, bent towards the goal post and actually bent towards Gibbony. To me, it was a ran into each other, both going for the ball. I don't think it should be pass interference on this play. I think this is a cheap one that Alabama's going to pick up. Good call. And that's good officiating, Dave. Guys got together, talked about it, discussed it. And I don't think they're pulling it because it was uncatchable. Watch Sam Collins. See, he just, and, and Gibbony, number 14, had his head turned back trying to pick up the football. Good call by the officials. Excellent job. See, if Sam Collins, number seven, stays straight up the field, he has room to fold towards the ball. But he ran bent to the middle, ran himself into a little bit of trouble. Third down and three. Galloway, the tailback. 
pressure package coming, Dave. Now they're checking out of it. Watts. Pass dropped on the near side. Looking for Michael James. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Three and out for the tie. Woody Woodenhofer wanted his defensive guys to be more aggressive, and they are on this play. Watch number 11, Russian Jones, play over and through the receiver. Here it comes. See you go over the top, Dave, trying to pull the upfield arm away, trying to go over the top to knock the ball away. Excellent job. They went ahead and got after him and stayed with it. A lot of confidence shown in the stop troops by Woody Woodenhofer early. Lane Bearden to punt. Tells him on. Bearden, a high school teammate of Tyler Watts. And kicks it out of bounds at the 29-yard line. The Vanderbilt Commodores with a buck 58 to go in the first quarter lead three to nothing. Back after this message from Texas Beat. Vandy leads three nothing. They open up with their second offensive possession of the game. Watch Vanderbilt's free safety calling the defense as they're in pressure situation, Dave, on the third and seven. Looks like they're going to come in blitz. When Tyler Watts checks off, see right there, he checks off, pulls them out of the blitz, back into more of a zone coverage. Now they suck up on the receivers. Nice play by Russian Jones, number 11, breaking up the pass to James. Vanderbilt takes over. Good move, one of the reasons they're still leading three to nothing. Well, an impressive opening drive for the Commodores. And Greg Solman continues his hot throwing. He could have thrown for 450 yards if it were not for drop passes last week. Williams, not much. A couple, maybe three yards. Rashid on the stop. When you're on the road to watch SEC football this season, plan on eating at Huddle House. I know Charles does, where you can order their big house breakfast and lunch platters anytime, 24 hours a day. Right up my alley. Hey, let me tell you, the 24 hours a day, and let me tell you, those 24 hours are in a row, too, all right? Those are consecutive. <laughs> As we jump there, I'm right in the middle of the Vandy offensive line, number 61, Duncan Cave, out of his stance a little quicker. Legs on the play. Vanderbilt has been set back a couple of times today. Yeah, that shouldn't be happening, should it, Dave? I mean, they, they're settled in now. I mean, I understand the first drive, but not now. Coming up next, it's doubleheader day on Jefferson Pilot Sports. You can watch Ole Miss and Auburn do battle from the Plains. Eli Manning, Jason Campbell, a couple of young quarterbacks going at it. That's coming up after this one, roughly 3.30 Eastern time. Vanderbilt, four penalties, 17 yards. Second down and 13. And another false start, maybe Alabama. Might have gotten over there first, we'll see. But it's the same guy, number 61, the right guard, Duncan Cave, firing out. Charles, let's just take a peek. There he is, right there. He got some movement, and he fired maybe down here. <laughs> the guy rushing across looked like Antoine Odom, number 98, was across the line of scrimmage, too. See how the officials de decipher this one. For the snap, false start. And that's got the Vanderbilt coaching staff a little excited there. Duncan Cave. See Crosby in the middle pointing it out. <laughs> Duncan Cave, the guilty party, a fifth-year senior. And we've got a flag thrown to the near side, and it looks as though Steve Crosby is going to be whistled for unsportsmanlike conduct on that bench. He is a little hot under the collar. Just a little bit, and, and amazingly enough, the sun came out about that time. You know, to give him a little extra boost over the edge. You know, that I think what Steve Crosby was upset about is Duncan Cave got called for the second illegal motion, but Antoine Odom was across the line of scrimmage. So Steve Crosby saying, hold it a second. My guy's firing on a guy coming unimpeded towards his quarterback. Well, this game has certainly had its share of controversy in the last couple of years. Certainly last year at Legion Field in Birmingham, there were some questionable decisions by some of those in these striped shirt jerseys. <laughs> some tough calls down on the goal line when Vanderbilt tried to wedge it across. They thought they got in. The officials saw it otherwise. A fumble by Freddie Millens that was called down. They saw it otherwise. 
Rodney Williams breaks a tackle. Williams out across the 20-yard line. A gain of about 12 by Williams. Rashid ran him out of bounds. Missed tackle by McBride, however. McBride could have stopped him for no gain. Yeah, uh, we're, we're going to talk about this throughout the game day. Vanderbilt's going to have to get deep after a while in order to get people off of him. But coming up right there, McBride has to make that tackle. Get him fronted up right in front of him, Dave. All he has to do is take him out at that point. That play stopped. Missed tackles have contributed to the biggest plays Vanderbilt's had today. There's Rodney Williams, the senior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Zolman has time. Zolman over the middle. Mathena dropped it, but the pass was a little bit behind him. Miles on the coverage. And that's okay, because they have to push him deeper to get him off of playing up in press position all the time. Carl Twelbush, the defensive coordinator from Alabama, will be in press position all the time if he can. You'll see Mathena coming across field right here. Ball, if it's not behind him, he's open. He's got him, and he's still running. And with four balls four in speed. stride. Yeah. Four four speed, you're making the touchdown call. <laughs> and Antonio Carter back to receive the Alabama the Vanderbilt punt for Alabama. He stands at the 35. Joe Webb puts a foot into it, and it is a bomb. This is going to roll into the end zone. That was a 78-yard punt. <laughs> wow. His long was 49. And that's out kicking your coverage, isn't it? I mean, that's bombing it down there. The old, it's great. He's going to feel good. Look at him grinning. He's going to feel good about it. The unfortunate part is at the 20. Well, his 49-yarder came last week. His career long is 55, which he's done a couple of times. That'll be one he'll keep an eye on. Oh, he'll definitely keep an eye on that one. Oh. Could you see the coaches over there hoping it would cartwheel to the <laughs> sideline and go out inside the five? Ray Hudson, the redshirt freshman, in the ball game for Alabama. They're going to call that a catch by Carter, a yard shy, and the field judge steps up and overrules the line judge and said he was out of bounds. Carter looked like he had a foot on the chalk. Yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting because the guy behind the play, and Carter had his back to him, shielding him off. That's the guy who made the, the call ultimately. The guy in front called it a good catch. Let's take a look on the sideline. Carter, see him slide? I, ooh, I think what's happening is the field judge is looking in the, at his feet, and I think he's saying that the first foot went out of bounds. A very close call. Tough to make that one on a bang-bang play. Second and ten. Hudson, single setback, couple of tight ends. And the handoff goes to the freshman from Bonifay, Florida, for no gain. Nate Morrow steps up from his outside linebacking spot, the senior out of New Concord, Ohio. Right in the middle, Alabama trying to use their big offensive line to zone block, but Nate Morrow, wow, just stays at home and folds inside. He stepped inside because he was on block, Dave, and when you're on block, you need to make the tackle, and Nate Morrow did. Nate Morrow, one of many Vanderbilt players that have already graduated, graduated and are now in graduate school. What a neat kid. Great guy to talk with. Talk about a bright future. Third down and eight. Pass is caught. It looked under throw, but the pass is caught by Triandis Loop. That's an Alabama first down out over the 45. And that'll be the last play of the first quarter. A gain of 23 yards, and Alabama is out of trouble. They're trying to get back in this. Back in a moment. After a word from Advance Auto Park. We move to the second quarter. Vanderbilt has played Alabama extremely well the last couple of years. Alabama has pulled away in the fourth quarter in those meetings. And this was a big, big third down conversion for the Tide, who in their last possession went three and out. Yeah, Justin Gibney, number 14, before on the pass interference that was waved off, he got his head around looking for the ball. On this play, he never did. Thus, the receiver was able to adjust to the football that Tyler Watts threw and make the catch without Justin Gibney able to make a play. One of the few mistakes Vanderbilt's made on defense thus far. Ready Millens on a kickoff return. Looked like he put something in his calf. He might tweak something. We haven't seen much of him. Let's see, try to figure out what the status is. Handoff to 
Galloway, that's a gain of a couple. Not over the 50. Let's take a look at those Cat Rental Store first quarter stats. Vanderbilt, 31 yards rushing. Passing yards, 82. Most of those came on that opening drive. And Mathena, the true freshman, with three receptions for 41 yards. Yeah, we got a glimpse of the future for Vanderbilt. The future has already arrived, hasn't it? Handoff goes to Hudson. He picks up the first down. He's to the Vanderbilt 40-yard line. Let's check in with uh, Dave Baker has more. Dave, uh, Freddie Millens is just, he kind of tweaked his ankle a little bit on that last kick return. They said he was able to walk it off, no real problem, but Dennis Franchoni said early in the week he wanted to spot Millens. He's back out in the slot now and hoping he's out there on a fresh leg. There he is. And off Galloway. Powers his way inside the 30 to the 26 of the Commodores. First down, tied Harold Lurcius on the stop. Safeties have to make a lot of tackles for Vanderbilt. Harold Lurcius, Justin Gibney, just straight ahead blast play. Man on man, Alonzo Ephraim, number 58, with a block. Gibney with a missed tackle, not able to keep his feet and drive through. Lurcius picked it up for him. Excellent blast play, Ahmad Galloway, showing all sorts of potential again today. First and ten. Galloway, the single setback. A couple of tight ends in the game. Galloway, nowhere to run against the Vanderbilt. Front three. Crosby, the first man on the spot for the Commodores. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Call Charles first <laughs> before you decide to do anything with this game. That's Penny Packer 5-5-5. Five, five, five. <laughs> Bray Hudson, the redshirt freshman, gets the handoff near the 20-yard line. That'll bring up a third down and a couple of yards. Russian Jones leads the charge for the Commodores. Hudson, a guy that uh, moved from defensive back the ball to the tailback position. Very strong, just a young guy, but benches over 440 pounds. He's also a great baseball player. He was drafted in the 19th round by the Montreal Expos in the 99 Major League Draft. Third down and three. Shotgun for Watts. Gives it to Hudson. And Hudson will be close to that first down. Pat Bruner. Another redshirt freshman leads the charge for the Commodores. Ray Hudson, number 27, is the third tailback for Alabama. Appears to be a little bit short. Fourth down, and Neil Thomas, number 48, the kicker, trotting onto the field for Alabama. Neil Thomas hit a 30-yarder last week against UCLA. Nine of 13 a year ago. Perfect on point after. She will attempt a 35-yarder as the wind that is back. Thomas sets sails and it is perfect. So Alabama matches Chuck Polino's field goal and we are knotted up at three in Nashville. We'll come back. Have more right after this. Nine to go here in the second quarter near capacity crowd at Vanderbilt Stadium. Don't forget at halftime, we'll be taking a look at the Alltel halftime stats and much, much more. Dave Baker will run us through our paces. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Charles gets a little breather at halftime. <laughs> Dave Rowe and David Steele over in Auburn. They'll have the Ole Miss Auburn game coming up after this one. Beard kicks off and sends it deep into the end zone and Jason Mathena will keep it there. So Vanderbilt will come out and have the ball at the 20-yard line. Tied at three. Vanderbilt was 
hit hard with penalties in their last possession and set them back in very difficult situations. Illuminates what Steve Crosby told us yesterday in our meeting, Dave. He said, we have to play the perfect game. You know, he's not talking about, you know, against just any, everyone. We have to play a perfect game and run our offense. Penalties can't happen. It makes it that much tougher for them to do what they need to get done. Zolman making his 25th consecutive start as this Vanderbilt quarterback. He moves up the charts every single pass and could become Vanderbilt's all-time passing leader when it's all said and done if he has a solid season. A little confusion, play clock trickling down, handoff to Lou Thomas. Look at him move around. Lou Thomas. The senior out of Atlanta, Georgia. Dodges three Alabama would-be tacklers. Made something out of nothing. Middle of the play. They hit one miss. Missed there by number 23, Miles. Wayne Bacon, number 24, eventually making the tackle, bringing him down, but that play should not have gone as far as it did, Dave. Four wide receivers, and there's no huddle offense. Little option play. Here's Lou Thomas, first down, and then some. Lou Thomas, who started at running back, was moved to wide receiver last year because of numbers in that tailback position with Jared McGrath, Ray Perkins, and of course Rodney Williams is showing why the coaches wanted him back in that position. The option in the option, the outside of the defensive end, Aries Monroe, number 22. He was caught between. Do I take quarterback? Do I take pitch? And then coming up on the play, number nine, Victor Ellis ended up missing the tackle, allowed Perkins to gain more yardage. You see this no huddle offense, which Vanderbilt runs almost exclusively right now, at least through the first three quarters of a game. Greg Zolman yesterday told us he loves it because it keeps the Alabama defense in a base formation for the most part. It makes it difficult for Alabama to change coverages, do multiple things on defense because you can't run people in and out in your specialty situations. And they can run it at any tempo. Thomas picks up about five. Ellis on the stop. Luke Thomas getting quite a bit of carries. They got they they really like their combination of running backs as we look at the Pizza Hut scoreboard Clemson and Wofford tied at seven how about North Carolina nice comeback Mac Brown facing his old school Virginia Tech over Western Michigan Wisconsin and Fresno State that's a good one UCLA and Kansas in the first Luke Thomas by the way four carries 22 yards play clock winding down and Greg Solman Got the timeout with 9.35 to go here in the second quarter. There is a flag on the far side of the field. They're probably going to pick that flag up. That's exactly what they're going to do. Zolman got the timeout off in time, so no penalty. Second down and four for the Commodores. We'll come back after a word from your local stations. Tied at three on a hot, muggy afternoon in Nashville. They're expecting some showers earlier, but they might have missed us, which is good news. He's for Charles in his blue shirt. 9.35 <laughs> to go in the second quarter. It's a second down and four situation for the Commodores. And their gold jerseys, gold helmets seem to be working quite well. In motion, Hatcher. Solman. Let's it fly. It was picked off, but Wayne Bacon was flying out of bounds, so an incomplete pass. And speaking of those gold jerseys, let's check in with Dave Baker. David, this is uh, only the third time the Commodores have worn these gold jerseys. The reason is Joe Hamilton, who's a physics professor here, did a study. He showed that the gold jerseys were 50 degrees cooler than the black jerseys, which you're supposed to wear at home. Obviously, when Jimmy Rayburn was making today's wardrobe assignments, he either didn't know that fact or, frankly, didn't care. Yeah, well, Dave, how about my boy Charles up here in the blue shirt? <laughs> hey, but my question on all this is, they wore white the other night. Wouldn't white be cooler than gold? <laughs> I, just a question. It was, it was, it, it well, was. Where's that physics professor? Get him on that. <laughs> At least, at, at least I rolled up my sleeves on right. a hot day. <laughs> now, should I tell them why you rolled up your sleeves? Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, it's because... Reset the clock to 9 minutes and 30 seconds. It, Dave, when, you, when you're a 33-inch sleeve, you can't buy 32-inch 
sleeves. This okay. thing was on <laughs> sale, though, Charles. And I just now figured out why. <laughs> Look, you just want to show off those, you just want to show off those forearms. Those, uh, no, I know. The, the you, and pretty soon you're going to have it rolled up to the shoulders and you can show week, off the guns. Next, next week I'm coming in the tank top, buddy. Watch <laughs> there out. There you go. Look out. That's a scary thought. <laughs> The clock reset to 9.34. They had 19 minutes up there a moment ago. It's a third down and four. Coming up after this one, roughly 3.30 Eastern, Peyton Manning, Jason Campbell, the Auburn Tigers, Tommy Tuberville, David Cutcliffe, all coming your way from the Plains. But first, the third and four. Zolman 7 of 11 today. Pump fakes, keeps it, tries for the first down and gets it. Oh, a heads-up play by the fifth-year senior quarterback. So 25 consecutive starts will do for you. Gained a lot of confidence in the Tennessee game last year. See the patience in the pocket, able to pull it back. It puts a nice move on Brooks Daniels, number 18, before David Daniel, number 57, ends up making the play, but a first down for Vanderbilt. There's Mary Helen and Bob, the Zolman clan, watching their son perform. They make every game, Dave. They don't miss a single one. A little shovel pass, hits the turf. That ball was nearly picked off. It was intended for Mathena. Looks like Wayne Bacon stepped up in that hole and nearly picked it off his shoe tops. And Wayne Bacon, a former walk-on, getting the start today for Shantu Ray, who was hurt, they had a little knee arthroscopic knee surgery. Second time they've run this play today, Dave, trying to get it to Mathena, but you see Mathena ran into number 60, who's on the ground there, Pat Green, knocked off the timing. Yeah, Mathena 180, Pat Green goes 335. <laughs> hmm, let's see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's Lou Thomas on a delay. Thomas barrels through some Alabama defenders. Thomas inside the 30 down to the 21. Lou Thomas. And here come the chance of Lou. Dave, how do you take an All-American out of a play? You block him right there. Number 84, Tom Simone blocks Salim Rashid. And then Lou Thomas. Running over Herschel Bolden, number 25, before Brooks Daniels, number 18, and David Daniel combined for the tackle way downfield. Determined running by the backs today by, from Vanderbilt. They're making plays when they don't seem to exist. A gain of 33. Stricker in motion. Stricker drops the football. It's down on the ground. Who's got it? That is twice Dan Stricker has lost the handle of the football. Alabama has the football. What a huge turnover. And don't forget last week, again, the game against Middle Tennessee State, Dan Stricker, the most reliable receiver Vanderbilt has, had three drops. The second time that he's dropped the ball, and both times the handoff appeared to be good. Naughton McKay Losher, number 90, appeared to come up with the ball. And here's the problem, Dave. Receivers are not used to taking handoffs. Thus, his pocket wasn't that great. The ball was stuck right where it needs to be. See number 85 Stricker trying to walk away from Steve Crosby. <laughs> I <laughs> Steve Crosby too. going away. We already saw Steve become the volcano earlier with a penalty. I'd hate to be Stricker right now. Ahmad Galloway picks up a first down as he barrels through the front of that Vanderbilt defense. A gain of 13. Lurch is able to stop him. There's Steve Crosby right there, the offensive coordinator. Look at him. I draw him up. I design him perfectly. I get you downfield. Fellas, just hold on to the football. Now Jeff Rutledge tried to make peace. But to finish my thought, Dave, if you're not used to making a pocket and taking handoffs, even if you practice it in game situations, you often revert. causes a problem. So are you better off pitching it to him? <laughs> I probably. They're used to seeing it in the air. Here's Galloway. Galloway running hard. Another nine yards for Galloway. That's close to the Alabama first down. He'll be about a yard shy. Antoine Bradford on the stop. He may be a big back, but look at the feet. Look at the movement. Sees the hole. Nice block up front by number 75 for Alabama, Atlas Harrion. You know what that reminded me of watching that angle? A little bit of Sean Alexander, 37, Ooh. used to run like that. Ooh, that's a good call, too. 
because Sean Alexander was able to have patience when he ran, see the holes and everything develop, and then burst through them. Galloway, nine carries, 77 yards already. Up top, Weiler, or, or Tyler Watts overthrows his receiver, Freddie Millens, by about 15 yards. Aaron McWhorter on the coverage. Good coverage by Aaron McWhorter, number five. Freddie Millens appeared to be trying to get to the post to start off, Dave, and then broke it back to the outside. Tyler Watson is going outside all the way to begin with. They really weren't on the same page on that pass. It's Herb Patera, the defensive coordinator, who's handled things so well since Woody Woodenhofer decided to take over the defense again. Still in there pitching for the team. High formation on third and short. First down, Alabama out near the 48-yard line. It was Galloway on the carry. Spent some time yesterday with Dennis Franchoni. Talked to him uh, here at the stadium. This team was going through the run through. Uh, what a, that, my first impression is here's a guy that you just kind of want to hang out with. I agree. What a nice guy he was with us on the conference call and in person. Alabama could only complete six passes last year. Today struggling as well, although they haven't really gone to the pass very much. They've tried to stick to the ground. Ray Hudson gets stood up right at the line of scrimmage. They may give him a yard on the play. Antoine Bradford led the charge with Pat Bruner up the middle. It is getting hot and muggy here in Nashville. You could sense that coming through yesterday when we around the Vanderbilt campus. It started to get a little humid. Yeah, it certainly did. And what's it take to get a cool zone here? You know, can we get a cool zone up here? They probably got one at Auburn from David Steele. <laughs> oh, without question. Bro. Oh, there's no question about that. Galloway and Hudson in the game, and here goes Hudson. Hudson has great speed inside the 20, tripped up at the 15. Russian Jones barely got him by the shoe. A gain of 35 for the redshirt freshman out of Bonifay, Florida. Now we're understanding why they moved him back from defensive back. Nice move, Justin Gibney not able to make a tackle, not able to come under control. Russian Jones able to trip him up with good hustle and pursuit. Last year, the winning touchdown, the, the touchdown that broke open the game for Alabama against Vanderbilt was done by Brandon Myrie. He hadn't seen the field much since Ray Hudson has started to emerge. Marvin Brown in at fullback. Galloway with the handoff, bounces it outside. Got maybe a yard. That'll bring up second down. Yeah, we haven't seen Myrie today. He's another big back who got into shape. Dennis Franchoni, when he came to Alabama, said, these guys are not in shape. I want some weight cut. I want some strength developed. Ben Pollard, the strength coach who did such a great job for him at TCU, he brought him with him. And he did a great job reshaping the physiques and the conditioning of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Couple of tight ends, Sam Collins in the slot. Galloway is your tailback. Galloway gets the handoff on a huge hole. Closed up nicely. And he's shy by about three yards of the first down stick. Gibney and Morrow on the stop for the Commodores. You're right, Dave. It was a huge hole that did close up quickly. If Gibney and Morrow and Pat Bruner, number 44, don't make the play. Watch, watch where it is right in there. See the cutback? If they don't close right now and make that play, he waltzes into the end zone. Charles, Alabama has 133 yards on the ground already with five minutes to go in the second quarter. Watts back to pass. Watts floats it, and it was just enough time for Russian Jones to come in and bat it away. Millens was the intended receiver. And he was open early in the route. Didn't get the ball to him fast enough. He was waiting for him to clear one of the linebackers or the secondary guys. And by the time he did, it was too late. See, right there, it's too, it's too late now. Russian Jones is able to drive on the ball. If that ball's delivered two counts earlier, it's a touchdown. Freddie Millens is open. Looked like Brett Beard might have got a big paw on it up front for Vanderbilt, which sent that ball a flutter. Second time he would have done that this year. He did it against Middle Tennessee also. Here's Neil Thomas, connected from 35. This one, they'll place at about the 17. And he splits the uprights again. So Alabama, with some big running plays from Ahmad Galloway, 
and Ray Hudson march it down the field but can only manage another field goal. It's a battle of field goal kickers in Nashville. 6-3 is our score. 4.50 to go before halftime. Alabama six, Vanderbilt three, 4.50 to go. There's MJ Garrett who went for 219 yards last week, second best in Vanderbilt history, and has really been limited because of a shoulder problem. Separated his shoulder last week, and uh, that hurts. Yeah, it hurts big time because Steve Crosby said it's the type of injury that if we keep him out all game today, he's probably going to be okay the rest of the season. If we try and play him today, he might stay dinged up all the way through the bye week. It's a tough, tough gamble for Vanderbilt, but maybe he just can't go. Maybe it's stiffened on him. And you know, it's, it, it, it hurts when Dan Stricker is not holding on to the football. And, and that's so unusual for him. You know, you'd like to have a guy like Garrett come on the field for you, but... Uh, and, and, and what a surprise Garrett has been, because you remember last year, Dave, he had trouble getting off the line of scrimmage until the game we saw ten, against Tennessee, the last game of the year. Four, four catches that day, two touchdowns, and he took that confidence into the spring and on into the fall. Yeah, Vandy really uh, showed a lot to their coaches last year, getting uh, uh, they were getting beat pretty badly. They were getting jumped on pretty well. Philadelphia, but rallied in the second half, made a game of it. And Tennessee was glad to see the clocks hit zero yes. because Vandy had them on the run at the end of the game. Out to Williams. Six or seven on the play. Thurman Ward, the freshman out of Starkville, Mississippi. Brings him down. How about Thurman Ward, number one for Alabama? He took over for Freddie, for Freddie Millens as kind of the option quarterback at Starkville High, back in Starkville, Mississippi, and then follows him on to Alabama. Now he has to cover him in practice every day. Bowman has done a nice job in this no-huddle offense. And have to call a timeout. Alabama gave him a look he didn't like. And Steve Crosby is going to give Greg Zolman a look he's not going to like. First thing that happened was his arms went up like, why are you calling timeout? And I go over there and can't take him with me to halftime. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't trade into the second half, do they? Zolman, 8 of 13 for 88 yards. Last week, this Vanderbilt offense put up 300 yards passing, 177 yards rushing, 477 total yards, and that's with all those mistakes. Let's send it down to Dave Baker, who's down on that hot sideline. Dave. David, just a mere four minutes and 38 seconds. Plenty to go here at the half. We'll take a look at the first half statistics, the big plays of the first half, scores from around the conference and around the country, and we'll take a look back at two of the greats in the Southeastern Conference. That's coming up right here at halftime. Thank you, Dave. Glad to have you on board this week. Yeah, it's good to have Dave here. I really like having Dave here. Yeah. My other question is, Dave, is that a gold shirt you're wearing? No, because, no. Because that would be 50% cooler. It would be. It, it, this is probably only about 35 percent cooler, but I, I, don't, I don't think that was taken into consideration when crew assignments were made. Yeah, I guess yeah. not, but it's a good-looking shirt on you, my man. Look. It looks like I'm a little light on the uh, cornstarch application. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking good, big fella. It's great to have you here. Good to be here. Dave will be with us at halftime. Second down and four. Pressure package, Dave, from Alabama. Looks like man coverage. Oh, he had his man. Could Simone, he... the tight end, was open, and Zolman threw a rare bad pass. Last week, we had, and when we talked to him yesterday, I said, did you throw a bad pass? He goes, I might have had one bad read. Yeah, the whole ball game. And his coaches substantiated that. Woody said it in a private meeting we had, and then Steve Crosby said the same thing. They'd never seen Greg Zolman as on as he was. 13 of 32 throwing, but he had nine drops, and he had a few throwaways just to keep him out of bad situations. Said he had a really, really good game. Tom Simone couldn't have been any more open, could he? <laughs> he was wide open. The Aaron throw brings up third and four. Dolman runs that same route and connects on a more difficult pass. It's Stricker inside Alabama territory, run out of bounds at the Crimson Tide 41. Reggie Miles was the guy who pushed him out of bounds. I think Dan Stricker's tired of hearing, hey, hold on to the ball on the sidelines. He beat Alabama's best cover corner, number four, Gerald Dixon, and that ball was thrown perfectly. 
all the way to the outside. And folks, if you have no you have no idea how difficult a throw that is for a left-handed quarterback. Against his body to the Ooh. wide side of the field, so accurately thrown, and he took a beating for it. But Greg Zolman's one of the tough guys. How about the pass? He can't hit the guy wide open, and then he threads it like that. Nowhere to run for Rodney Williams. Kendall Moore had the first man to bring him down. Kenny King broke through that line and really forced Williams to start jumping around. And when you have to do all that dancing behind the line of scrimmage on a short, quick hitting play, usually means you're not going anywhere. When we asked the coaches at Vanderbilt about what concerns you about Alabama's defense, first thing that came to their mind was the front four. Moorhead, King, Johnson, and Rowe. Yeah. Big, fast, and mean. <laughs> that's, exact, that's exactly right. Having Moorhead back, number 54, that's a big upgrade for them. Salim Rashid. Again, get some help from Kendall Moorhead. Rashid stood him up. Moorhead knocked him down. And the point you made about that front four, Dave, that allows Salim Rashid, number 11, to roam free in the middle. He's got four guys keeping people off of him. Right now, he already has five tackles for the game. If he's if he's, if he's clean to run to the ball, he's going to make big plays. And that's what happened as a freshman, as you alluded he, to earlier. He had all the guys healthy. Last year, they weren't healthy. Didn't have quite the same season, although he was still a factor. A lot more difficult to play off of a guard and then go make a play. Zolman steps up, sees some room, runs it. Zolman to the 35, and five white jerseys jump on top. So Dixon, the first man on the spot. I'd be stunned if they don't go for it here, Dave. I would be surprised if they don't go for it. Here's Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator for Alabama. They're going to go for it. No yeah. hesitation at all by Steve Crosby. And Woody Woodenhofer okaying them going for it. Hey, why not, right? Let this thing hang out. After all they took last week after losing Middle Tennessee State, let them go. Four wide receivers on a fourth down and three. We've seen a young guy already today make a contribution, number 31, Jason Mathena. Now watch number 80 on the corner. If you see it on the corner, he's going to make a block right there. Brandon Smith, he played Herschel Bolden. It wasn't a knockdown block, but it's what they call a stalk block. Dave. You just stalk the defender, make him dance with you, let the back make his cut. That way, there, Greg Zolman made the cut on the option first down. The no huddle. Williams gets a couple. That looked like a pretty good play, that fourth down play by Alabama. It looked like defensively they were there. There's a flag down, by the way, way back on about the six-yard line. Um, let's see what that call is. But it looked like Alabama had strung that out pretty nicely. They were there. The stalk block by Smith helped them. Maybe an illegal substitution here for Alabama. But, but the stalk block helped. But you know what else helped? Alabama was hesitant in playing the option. Weren't sure who had what on the assignment because it's not your normal option coming out of shotgun. You know, Alabama's used to seeing it out of eye formation. The defense was protected with 12 men on the field. It's a 15-yard penalty. Legal substitution for Bama had 12 guys probably trying to switch someone in and out against his no huddle, unable to get him off of the field. Well, that'll march it down to the 16-yard line. First and 10 from there. And Vanderbilt ready to roll. They haven't even set the change yet on the far side. It's that quick tempo that they practice, and now it's in effect. Blitz coming. Zolman sees it. Fires. Looking for his receiver. Brandon Smith, the freshman out of New Orleans. We anticipated seeing Smith as well today. Ball was behind him on the slant. Greg Zolman delivers a little bit behind and a little bit high. It would have been an excellent catch if he made it. Zolman standing tough in the pocket. Good block up front by number two, Rodney Williams. Nice block on Cornelius Wortham, the linebacker. Zolman a little bit disappointed, but that's a true freshman going up to make that grab, Dave. Maybe Dan Stricker comes down with it because he's a vet. True freshman getting his first action. That would have been a big time catch for him. Second down and 10. There's the Asano in motion. They give the handoff to Rodney Williams, and he trips over Zolman. 
Stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we'll be highlighting the best in the SEC, which is presented by our friends at Don Pablos. That's all coming up with Dave Baker. Buzz. I'm liking this food. Hubble House, Don Pablos. A guy like me, that's dangerous for me to be around with all that food mentioned, you know? But Dave, these guys have to score here. All right, this is big. Another big drive by Vanderbilt. Field goal doesn't get it done. They need six. Third down, 13 after the loss of three. Over the middle, pass is complete. Down inside the 10 to Smith. That is shy of the first down by about two yards, and that'll bring up a fourth down and two. <laughs> hey, you went for it before, didn't you? Go now. I'm thinking the same thing. Why bother to even hesitate on this thing? Let's go get it. You're either down six to three at the half, which is almost a wash anyway. You don't lose any real momentum because you're going for it deep in Alabama's territory. Go get it if you're, if you're Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt does have a timeout left, but of course they will save it. They may use it here. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're going to use it. They're going to send out the field goal unit after the timeout to tie this game up. You know, it's amazing. We only have nine points on the board at this point in the game. Chuck Polino field goal and two field goals by Neil Thomas for Alabama. These teams have marched up and down this football field. For as few points as you're going to see. I saw a WAC game a number of years ago. Remember the old WAC? I saw Hawaii when they were pretty good against Air Force. A 6-3 to three game in the WAC. The same thing happened, Dave. Up and down the field, both teams, and no one could score. Are you surprised that they're going to kick the field goal here? Yeah, after talking to Steve Crosby yesterday, I am, because, you know, he was to the point of, we got to throw caution to the wind. If right. we want to compete, we've got to trick some people. We've got to take chances. Uh, on a week-to-week -week basis, we just don't have the depth and numbers that some of the other schools in the Southeastern Conference have. So after hearing that, yes, I am. Yeah, I agree with you because I thought that once they went for it out in the field and got it, to come right back here to have Alabama on the run and take it. But I understand Woody does not want to go in the locker room behind when he has a chance to be even again. Right. Start 0-0. Zero, zero. Guys, we just started up again. Now it's a 30-minute game if, if they make this field goal. We've got 400 yards of total offense today between these two teams. <laughs> in a half. 25-yard field goal. Chuck Polino already connected from 20. Son of a defensive back coach, Dino Polino. The left footer splits the uprights. So another good drive by Vanderbilt. Stalls. Dennis Franchoni's club only gives up the three points. And we are tied at six with 20 seconds remaining here before halftime. And what Alabama will do on offense will be dictated on the kickoff by the kickoff return, Dave. If they get out into the field, maybe take a shot at a downfield. If they get on the 20, they'll probably take a knee and go to the half, go to the locker room. And there is a strong wind blowing from our right to left. So Vanderbilt will be kicking into that wind, meaning that that ball probably will be, it'll be, have to be crushed to get inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, if it's your normal kickoff and you kick it up high into the air, you're hoping the wind if it, it will do some tricks with it. But if not, that usually means your kick return has a chance to run and catch the ball going forward, give them that good momentum going forward instead of retreating and trying to take it over a shoulder. 11 plays, 72 yards. It took up four and a half minutes. It's been a strange game in terms of watching these two teams pile up some yards and just can't put it in the end zone. And two field goals apiece. And if things hold, as, as you would expect that they would with 20 seconds to go, we started up again after, after a short break. <laughs> All even. And how much fun is that for everyone who's here today? And I don't think Woody Woodenhofer could have asked for a whole lot more, do you think? No, I, I, you give up six points to Alabama, you want a lot from feeling pretty doggone good about yourself. You mentioned how many yards Alabama piled up against UCLA, who's highly regarded on, on opening night. Was it almost 500 yards they piled up in that yeah. game? Alabama put up uh, total yards. 458. There's Freddie Millens. Millens has the seat tripped up at the 30. Pretty good coverage by the Vanderbilt kickoff team. Tackle made by 
Ronald Hatcher, or excuse me, Zeke Brandon. Dominic Morris back to stop for Vanderbilt. First turn of 20 yards, we'll see what Alabama does with 13 ticks on the clock. Definitely loosen up in the secondary if you're Vanderbilt. No one gets behind you no matter what. Alabama looks like they're going to come out shotgun, see if they run inside handoff or if they go for it. Middle of the day, the delay goes to Hudson, who stumbles over the hash mark. And Alabama will let the clock run out. So Vanderbilt gets what they wanted. They wanted to be close at halftime and make this a short game. They wanted to shorten it up. And they've done just that. Tied at six. A couple of Neil Thomas field goals. A couple of Chuck Polino field goals. We've seen some impressive offense from Ann Vanderbilt. And some great running from Ahmad Galloway and Ray Hudson of the Crimson Tide. So we've got two quarters of play remaining here at Vanderbilt Stadium. Last year, 28 to 10, the Crimson Tide won it. But it took a fourth quarter push by Brandon Myrie of 41 yards up the middle for the tie to win it. Let's check in with Dave Baker. What do you got to be awfully happy with that first half of play? Well, I'm happy. I'd be happy if we were ahead by about uh, 20 points, but uh, our kids are playing their hearts out, and they're, you know, they've uh, put that thing behind them last week, yeah. and they're working hard, and, uh, you know, make some, uh, make some good plays here in the second half, get some turnover to win the game. All right, thanks, Coach. Best of luck. That's Woody Woodenhofer right now. Our score here at the half at Vanderbilt Stadium. It's the Commodores 6. And Alabama 6, we're back with more here on JP Sports. SEC football is brought to you by Chevy. The cars millions of people depend on every day. We'll be there. By Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Remember, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. And by Pizza Hut. So much variety, the best pizzas under one roof. SEC football is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. By Don Pablo, the real enchilada. By Altel. Altel Total Freedom Plans give you nationwide calling with no roaming or long distance charges. By your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, get the feeling. By the thousands of drink combinations at Sonic, America's drive-in. And by Ice House. You've got a style all your own. Ice House style. Enjoy. We are just moments away from third quarter action. Alabama and Vanderbilt. The Tide have won 16 straight in this series. That could be in jeopardy today. Let's check in with Dave Baker as Dennis Franchoni with him. Coach, I don't know how much of a historian you are, but this is one of those old-time SEC battles. Well, we knew this would be a tough game. Uh, Vanderbilt always plays Alabama tough, and they played very well, and we've got to tackle a little bit better on defense. We've got to find one, a way to get one in the end zone on offense. I know you had a big emphasis this week on penalties, and you really shortened that up in the first half. Much better uh, overall, and hopefully we'll continue to be that way in the second half. All right, thanks, Coach. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you very much, Dave. Woody Woodenhofer, the pseudo-defensive coordinator. <laughs> this week, the head coach taking over the reins, and I mean taking the reins. He has uh, spent all week back in his old stomping grounds. But here's a look at our quarterbacks, Tyler Watts and Greg Zolman. 58% completion rate for Zolman, thrown for 131 yards. He's had a couple of hiccups. I mean, maybe we got carried yeah. away because of what the coaches told us about how perfect he was last right. week at throwing the football. He's had a couple of errant throws, but... He hasn't done anything to really hurt this football team. I think a couple of penalties and bad situations have hurt this team, and it's certainly the big fumble by Stricker. Yeah, excellent points that you make there. And Greg Zolman has not hurt the team. He's helped it a few times by making decisions not to throw the football, to tuck it down and run, and picked up a big first down on a fourth and two on the option with some determined running, faking a pitch, keeping it and running the, running the football for the first down. An excellent leader for his Vanderbilt team is Greg Zolman. Zolman and company will have the first crack at it as Lane Bearden of Alabama kicks off. It's a low liner. It'll take a nice Sunday hop. It is taken by Ronald Hatcher. Hatcher out across the 30 to the 32. A good return. Stop made by Nelton McKay Losher, the right defensive end, the sophomore out of Canada. 
Culture. So Vanderbilt, Charles, what do they have to do to get this thing cranked up? Well, they've been cranked up pretty well. They've got to get into the end zone. Twice in this game, we've seen them have long, extended drives where they've played Alabama almost off their feet. But Alabama stiffens inside the 20. Vandy not able to get anything but field goals. That's the problem Vanderbilt has. Those field goals must be touchdowns in order for them to pull off what they want to pull off today, and that's a victory. They can't afford many more three-pointers. I would think they need to strike for six. That handoff, Williams nearly broke the tackle. Gets about four on the play. Williams in the first half. Not much of a huge factor compared to Lou Thomas's 54 yards. Now, the, the Vanderbilt backs have done an excellent job running. Chris James, number 32, unable to make the tackle at, the play, at a spot that the play would have been stopped. Running back able to get more yardage. But when you're watching these guys run, Rodney Williams, number two, Lou Thomas, number four, you've seen a lot of determination in their runs today. Little play action pressure coming. Zolman sacked at the 28-yard line. Alabama brought the heat. And Aries Monroe picks up the sack. It's his fourth tackle of the day. And his second sack this season. Yeah, when you run a lot of misdirection, that means it takes time to develop the play. Tom Simone, number 84, trying to drop back and pick up Aries Monroe, number 22 for Alabama. Got their account too late. The sack made by Monroe, number 22. He's a speed rusher, Dave. Knows how to get up field. But when you take time to fake handoffs, it takes extra time. It means the linemen have to hold their blocks longer. Zolman, big drop. Fires over the middle, has his man Stricker at midfield. First down, Vanderbilt. What a bullet from Zolman. Bolden brought him down. Do you get the sense that Dan Stricker is tired of dropping footballs? Do <laughs> you get the sense that Dan Stricker wants to step up and be a leader for his team? Ran a deep curl route, and Greg Zolman steps up in the pocket on rhythm. Excellent protection from, up, from the up front guys. Sticks it between the eight and the five, and only a tackle by Bolden. Keeps Stricker from making it into an even bigger play. Stricker wasn't going to drop that, Charles. That stuck. <laughs> when Rumble's impaled him. Williams around the right side. First down at the 35 of Alabama. Brooks Daniels runs him out of bounds. You asked the question about what does Vanderbilt need to do differently? Nothing. The same thing they're doing, the same thing they did in the first half, they're doing in the second, and it's working. I'm anxious to see what happens if they continue to progress downfield and have a shot at getting it in the end zone. That has to happen. You can't keep making these big drives, as you mentioned, Dave, and come away with it with only field goals. All right, here we go. Shotgun formation. Lou Thomas in the game now, and Lou gets the football. Lou stutter step. Lou Thomas inside the 20 to the 18. Reggie Miles with the tackle downfield, but again, two missed tackles caused by Lou Thomas. Watching number four, we talk about determined running. There's one right there. Great move that he made on the All-American Salim Rashid. Then he made a second one on Antonio McBride, number nine, excuse me, Roberto McBride, number 19, before Miles makes the tackle deep in the secondary. First and 10, little option, loose football. Loses about six. Mathena did a great job in covering that up. It looked as though Mathena was a long, long way away for a pitch. He, he was, and it's such a timing play when you're using a wide receiver coming back from short motion or coming from a short set to become your option man in the option game because he's not getting a rhythm running with the quarterback from the beginning. Mathena's out here, see? And then and Greg Zolman moves upfield. Mathena has to, be, has to hesitate and decide, do I move up with him? Do I stay where I am? It's very difficult to do to get that timing. You sometimes wonder if Vanderbilt, in their haste to trick people, sometimes tricks themselves out of big plays. You have to be careful with that. Second down, 16, loose football. Who's got it? Vanderbilt, Nezia Sanalu. Came up with the football, but here we go. I mean, this is what we saw in the first half. Vanderbilt moves it, moves it, moves it, boom. We just talked about tricking people in motion. Watch Asanalu, number 82, right there. He moves into the path of the snap. Timing is everything. You know, it's okay to move guys around and get them into the right spot, but you don't want them moving behind the center when the ball is snapped. That's what caused that play to go awry. Third and 22. First down markers down at the nine. They've lost 12 yards in the last two plays. Up top, 
Stricker looked like uh, he got into a little shoving match with Herschel Bolden, number 25. Pass falls incomplete. Remember, remember, there's no five yard rule in college football as you have in pro football. So as long as the ball's not in the air, Herschel Bolden could stay in front of him and beat on him, so to speak, to keep him and knock him off his route. And that's what he did. The defensive play by Bolden. Another field goal attempt for Vanderbilt. Here comes Jimmy Stover, the left footer, will attempt a 47 yarder. Felino, the short distance field goal kicker. Stover kicks off and handles it. Most of the kicks over 40 yards. How often do you see two left footers kicking on the same team? And that's going to be short. It looked as though Stover might have stuck it in the dirt. That is his foot. And he misses from 47. So an opening drive that looked pretty impressive amounts to nothing really for Vanderbilt. We'll come back after this. Turned out to be a really good game, so everybody's trying to find a seat. <laughs> Get a look at this one. A hotel across the way here at Vanderbilt Stadium. And pretty good seat, it appears. Vanderbilt defense takes the field for the first time in the second half. And look what they have done. Last week, they gave up over 600 yards to Middle Tennessee State. That's a good offense. Yes, a very good offense. But today, they're putting the clamps on Alabama. The influence of Woody Woodenhofer, and it's not schemes, Dave, it's motivation. Carter catches the pass, gain of about five. He's at 35. Harold Lursch just comes in to make the stop. Yeah, you know, that was interesting is that he wasn't really doing anything differently with the defense. He said he noticed the guys maybe having a little bit more of a, a, a step. A little bounce. Hey, when the head coach is in your is in your position meetings now, the head coach is running things, there's definitely going to be an extra bounce. No matter how much you think you respond to your coordinator, that's the head coach. And you better be, you better pick it up. And hey, I, I don't blame him. I mean, it's his backside on the line. That's right. And, it, and unfortunately for him, you know, with all the talk, that's something he has to combat. And I think he just took the, the idea that I'm going to go down myself if I'm going down. Go down swinging. You might as well. And, and, and again, it's not the scheme. You made a great point. It's the motivation of doing what he wants them to do. He said they were too passive against Middle Tennessee. Worried about giving up big plays. Well, he said, the heck with that. Let's go play. Let's go after people. If they get a big play, at least they got it making our best when we made our best play at it. Here we go, third and four. Alabama's had a number of third down opportunities today. play action a lot of times Watts hits his tight end Terry Jones for the first down Russian Jones runs him out of bounds that was a well-designed play Watts had all day to throw remember this play from the first half now they ran it to the opposite side fake they fake they fake the run and then bootlegging out a little bit is Tyler Watts he hits the tight end on just a little short route, wide open because everyone had cleared. Sam Collins, number seven, had cleared all the way downfield, took a couple of defenders with him. Only the fourth completion of the afternoon for Alabama. Big hole, Galloway inside the 40, out of the 39, another Alabama first down. Justin Gibbony comes in to make the stop. Gibbony had 11 tackles in the opener. Another tackle for the secondary. And that play that was just run to Terry Jones helped set up the run coming back with Galloway. They, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship, Dave. The run helps the pass, the pass helps the run. Both of them setting up each other. Galloway over the 100 yard mark. Remember, he had 172 last year at Legion Field against the Commodores. Galloway will add a couple of more yards, but he gets hammered. Bradford steps up. Harold Lursch is in on the play. Ahmad Galloway at 73 yards and 21 carries against UCLA, which tied his career hard, high for carries in the game. Second down and six. Two tight ends, Sanders and Jones in the game along with Ray Hudson, and a bad snap, and Tyler Watts pays a big price. Chuck Losey, Hunter Hillenmeyer converge to sandwich the junior quarterback. Bad snap. 
from the center, Alonzo Abram, in the shotgun formation. In the open of the game, we saw Tyler Watts handle that snap against UCLA and throw a touchdown pass. No such luck this time because Vanderbilt had stacked up and loaded up and came after. Man coverage behind him. See what he does now. Charles, you go from second to six to third to ten. And, and Woody Woodenhofer calling the signals on, on the defensive side. Here they come. Oh, here comes the heat by the Commodores. Blitz is on, pass is complete, but well shy of the first down at about the 36-yard line. It went to Triandis Loop. And that'll bring up fourth down and about six, maybe seven. Punting situation, I would bet, because, because I'm not sure they're going to try and kick a field goal from this distance. This would be a 53-yard field goal, but now I see Neil Thomas coming out. So we'll see what kind of leg Neil has. Fifty two yard field goal. He has hit three field goals over 50 yards in his career. Only Van Tippen has done that more. He hit four in 1985 Did Van Tippen. It's a fake Short and punt. the pooch kick will trickle down inside the 10. Doesn't have to be pretty, does it? Oh, what a nice, nice play. You don't get yards for style. <laughs> Neil Thomas can kick and punt. We're tied at six. We've got under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. It's a good one in Nashville. Come back and stay with us, folks. SEC football is brought to you in part by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, get the feeling. Let's go back to that last play, a pooch punt from Neil Thomas, Charles, and it was very effective. It was very effective, as I said before. No style points. It wasn't pretty, but it didn't need to be because Vanderbilt was playing them in what they call a safe situation. They weren't really going to rush because that's the type of point on the field that you can fake it pretty easily. That allowed them to pooch punt it, and it worked very well for them. And they're also kicking into a pretty steep, uh, stiff breeze. I can get that out. Another reason for the pooch punt, and here's the handoff. Thomas goes maybe a yard. Moorhead on the stop. This Alabama defense has given up some yards, but they they have in crunch time stood up when they needed to. Yeah, they they forced them to kick field goals. And actually, you know, a very fan of a kick field goal is Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator. Looks agonized, but he's just focused, folks. That guy can call defenses with the best of them. On second and 10, Alabama has five defensive backs in the game. Here goes Stricker in motion. And off to Lou Thomas. Lou Thomas tries to find a seam. Picks up seven, maybe eight on the carry. And that'll bring up third down and relatively short, maybe three. Got to block up front if you're Vanderbilt. You see right up here in the middle, Vanderbilt going to seal things off and give them a break room. Right up the middle, number 55, Jamie Byron, right there, took out Salim Rashid, number 11, the All-American middle, middle linebacker. But Vanderbilt, a third and short. Luke Thomas, eight carries, 79 yards, third down and four. Nearly picked off. Oh, boy. Salim Rashid was standing right in the way of the pass and it bounced off his arms. Block me once, I'll go out and knock your pass down. Nice. Is he a true definition of sideline to sideline yeah. player, Dave Neal? I noticed that in the first series today. He's ready to play, there's no doubt. Came in and got involved with the lifting program in the offseason. One of their top four lifters, I believe, in their Night of Champions lifting program. Salim Rashid led all linebackers, I think bench 475. That's a man wearing number 11. Here's Joe Webb, whose last punt traveled 78 yards, fifth longest in school history, and he booms another one. Millens back at his 30. Millens, nowhere to go, and tackled at the 41-yard line. But another nice punt from Joe Webb. David Meadows on the stop for the Commodores. And we are tied. Six apiece in Nashville after the 55-yard punt from Joe Webb. We will be back after a word from your local stations.
Five minutes, 10 seconds remaining here in the third quarter and what's turned out to be a relatively nice afternoon in Nashville, however windy, but we will take it because it's cooled us down considerably. Yes, yeah, a natural cool zone. And it has been hot on that field. These two teams have matched each other shot for shot today. Tyler Watts with a couple of sacks is minus 12 rushing, passing six of 11, but he hit three of three on his last drive. Let me see if they go back to that throwing the football. They do. Freddie Millens at midfield. And that's where he stopped. It's a game of about seven. Aaron McWhorter on the stop. Fans, jpsports.com has the coverage you want. No one knows the SEC like JP Sports, and we bring the information to you online. Tune in each week for previews of upcoming games, broadcast information, and many other exciting features for the inside scoop. Log on to jpsports.com. Hey, I spent some time saying that Vanderbilt had to convert and get some points. Same thing works for Alabama. They can't stay in a 6-6 game also. They're going to move down the field. They need to try and score. They need to get a touchdown themselves. Over the last two years, the fourth quarter was the difference for Alabama as they pulled away. Tyler Watts breaks a couple of tackles inside the 35. It's a first down. A gain of about 15 on the play for Tyler. That'll get his rushing yardage back to the positive. Tyler Watts had a chance to be tackled right here. All right, you'll see a Doyle Crosby, number 93, reaching with an arm tackle. And it's Sam Collins. Got a little bit of shirt, a little bit of jersey, number seven. A little bit of jersey downfield blocking, but doesn't get called for it. German run by Tyler Watts, but Doyle Crosby, the defensive lineman, has to make that play. 25 missed tackles a week ago by that Vanderbilt defense. Ahmad Galloway. Runs right into Pat Bruner in the middle, and Bruner not letting go. Bruner, interesting story. He actually took the job away by just playing excellent football in the fall for Mike Adam. Mike Adam was expected to start at that middle linebacker spot, departed by Jamie Winborn, but the freshman from Cincinnati, 6'3", 250, just stepped up and looks like he might have hurt his shoulder on that last play. Yeah, he split time last week with Mike Adam and Woody Woodenhofer when he took over the defense. Here's going to be a timeout by Vanderbilt yeah. to try and get a replacement in. When Woody took over the defense, he said, Bruner's going to play until he can't play, until he plays himself out of this position. Well, I want to see this. Anymore, and That's right. <laughs> and right now, <laughs> at the moment, he can't play anymore. But Woody said he was going full time. He's going to go the distance with the freshman. And it's nice to know you have Mike Adam who can come in in that spot. Adam played a lot of football last year. He started the first two games. Really a tough situation for Vanderbilt when they lose Jimmy Williams and they lose Jimmy Williams, uh, Jimmy Winborn for the first two games, and including the Alabama game a year ago. Don't forget, we've got a doubleheader today on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Eli Manning and Ole Miss travel into Auburn to meet a very tough Auburn defense. That was awesome in the first game. They shut out Ball State 30 to nothing. Ole Miss, Auburn coming your way as soon as we finish up here in Vanderbilt. Well, we got a second, maybe hit on this NCAA investigation that's uh, being launched officially over at Alabama. We talked to Dennis Franchoni uh, about it. And basically what he told us was, you know, here's the deal, Dave. Nobody on this staff, nobody on this football field is involved in any of the allegations that have been leveled against our program. We knew when we took this job as a staff that this was going to be an issue. Right. It's not like the letter caught anybody by surprise. They were just waiting for it to get there. And he said he's not really a topic he will discuss with his team. Uh, whatever happens will happen. It's out of their control, and their job is to just win football games and on Saturdays. Ahmad Galloway inside the 25. That'll probably be an Alabama first down. Justin Gibbony on the stop. Do you think, Charles, from a player standpoint, that an NCAA investigation like that, with all that has been said over the last 12 months about this, will it, does that have an impact as a player? You played this league. It has an impact if you start losing games. You see, if you're winning games, it becomes you against the world. It's kind of like, forget those guys. We're showing you that that doesn't matter to us. But as soon as you start losing, it becomes it becomes a crutch for you. Oh, we've got NCAA issues over our heads. We can't get focused. You get the sense Dennis Franchoni won't let that happen. Galloway again, a couple of yards. 
And one final note on that subject, so let it go and let the course take care of itself. Exactly, because it was months away. I think the interesting thing about the NCAA was the fact that they noted there was no lack of institutional control. That's huge. That is a major issue that I think Alabama heard, uh, cleared that hurdle. Now, certainly there are a lot of things that you know, happen in this program, but I think that's something the NCAA will certainly look at. What happened were by coaches, not the institution. Right, and when you say lack of institutional control and put that on a program, that sets you up for the old death penalty if something else happens. Alabama should not have to worry about that. Enough of that. Yes. Alabama's got a lot of football ahead. 6'6", six, six, our score, 234, Hudson carries. Pat Bruner back on the field. And, and now, we're in a third and short situation for Alabama. Let's say they're going to bring Galloway back into the game as tailback. With Marvin Brown, number six, is the fullback. I think this situation for Alabama, you line those big ho horses up, and you slam it at Vanderbilt and see what happens. And Alabama has to come out of this with points also, preferably a touchdown. Third and short, couple of tight ends. Sanders in motion to the option. I think Watts got it. They dragged him back to the 15, but I think his forward progress took him down to about the 13. This is going to be interesting. See where that spot is. Looks like they're going to measure for it. Notice that, that Dennis Franchoni and Les Kanan, the offensive coordinator, put the ball in the hands of their playmaking quarterback. Give him that option because he's such a strong runner. He's got about a yard. Maybe we'll give him two, two and a half feet. Yeah, and with a reliable place kicker, Alabama feels as if they have control. See, I, myself, I might seriously consider hammering at him and going for it. But Dennis Franchione feels like he has control defensively. So he's going to try and kick the field goal. Remember, there is a very, very stiff breeze in the face of the Alabama offensive unit. Neil Thomas will attempt the 31. He's hit from 35. He's hit from 26. See, Dennis Franchione doesn't want to get there and not get the first down and give Vanderbilt any kind of momentum. Richie with the hold. Kick is up, and the kick is perfect. The fifth field goal of the afternoon. The good news for Alabama, they have three of them. And a pretty good drive that just stalls for Alabama. Nine to six is our score with a minute, 32 to go in the third quarter. Well, get the call is back, and this year is your chance to win every weekend with Ice House. Saturday during the game, a few lucky consumers will get a winning phone call, and one of those winners will get to see their favorite team play all season long. It could be you. That's right, you at home. See participating Ice House displays or visit icehouse.com to register your phone number. Ice House, official beer of JP Sports Broadcast. Would like to congratulate George Culver from Phoenix, Arizona. Last week's Get the Call Grand Prize winner. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents who are 21 and older. See displays for official rules. Sweepstakes ends November 20th, 2001. All right, George Culver, way to go, buddy. First winner of the year. Now, boy, George, out the gate early. All the way in Phoenix. How yeah, about that? S the SEC spans the country. The JP arm. No, it touches everywhere. You can't run from it. You can run, but you certainly can't hide. Like and why the, would you want to? You got a chance to win. It's like the Alabama crowd. Everywhere you turn, they're there. You got the Crimson shirts <laughs> everywhere. They are there. Very well supported team. Hatcher back deep, along with Mathena. Lane Beard will kick off for the tide. It's a three point game. and Hatcher, two guys who can burn with the football. What a kick into the win. Wow. Athena will take a knee in the end zone. Vandy will take over at the 20. Folks, this wind is howling in the stadium. It is. And he just hit that about 75 yards into a deep breeze. He hammered that. It looks like you hitting that three iron. You know, hitting that low riser. One thing I noticed on kickoff coverage, Dave, 
Guess who was one of the first guys downfield for Alabama? Their All-American middle linebacker, Salim Rashid. Playing on special teams, understand that big plays happen on special teams too, not pulling himself out. Yeah, Dennis Franchoni has said, I will put my best guys out on that field regardless of the situation. And here's MJ Garrett on the football field on the near side, making his first real appearance. And the first catch out to the 30. Close to a first down. Let's see if he gets up and is all right. We're gonna get him in the game. Get it to him first. Garrett. Here's what Greg Zolman has looked at and seen this afternoon. Got off to a real hot start. And found Mathena a couple times, the freshman, the true freshman, for some big plays. Zolman has been very, very good today and hasn't cost his team much. That would have been a heck of a catch by the tight end, Tom Simone. That one needed to be to the outside, throwing a little bit to the inside. You're right, it would have been a heck of a catch by Simone. But, Greg, but people remember this about Greg Zolman. He's not your prototypical pocket passer. Because Greg Zolman, is, you know, they've got him listed on this team as 6'4", 212. He's nowhere near 6'4", Dave. You know, I'm thinking more like 6'1", you know, stretch him out. So that means he's got to see through a lot of traffic by staying in the pocket. He does an excellent job moving himself into throwing lanes and delivering the ball. Third and one. They give the ball to Williams. She's tackled by Daniels. First down, Vanderbilt. When you can complete that six, seven, eight yard pass or pick up that six or seven yards on a run on first down, it's hard not to be good offensively. It opens up your whole arsenal. Now if you're Steve Crosby and you're picking up that much yardage on first down, you can take a bigger shot downfield on second down if you would like, or you continue to run your offense and be efficient. But it does put Alabama in a tough spot trying to call defenses on second and short. Pass ball's incomplete. Looking for Williams. Williams and Daniels, the outside linebacker on the stop. Daniels, sophomore out of Jasper, Florida. Jeff Rutledge, the quarterback coach, the old Alabama quarterback, signaling, signaling in the plays, and he's down on the field. You know, he spent the last couple of years here at Vanderbilt up in the booth. He wanted to be close to his quarterback, and, you know, we talk about a sense of urgency from coaches coaching. You're getting that at Vanderbilt. Everyone wants to be near their kids. Williams. Bobbled it, caught it, and ran right into a wall, led by Brooks Daniels and Dixon. The passes that Greg Zolman's been throwing, those are such timing patterns, Dave. They've got to be delivered on time and precise, and these guys have to catch them. We've got a tight contest. It's been hard hitting, a lot of fun. 9-6, Alabama. As a player for the Crimson Tide between 1933 and 35, Paul Bryant was a part of the undefeated team that went 10-0 in 1934. After four years as an assistant at Bama, he became an assistant to head coach Red Sanders here at Vanderbilt for a couple of seasons. In 1941 against Kentucky, he was the leader on the field because Sanders was hospitalized with appendicitis. That game, by the way, ended in a tie. It happens to be the 40th anniversary as well of the first Bear Bryant National Championship as the head coach of the Crimson Tide. 1961, the 30th anniversary when he switched to the wishbone. Zolman on third and five, incomplete pass, looking for his tight end, or excuse me, Dan Stricker, who could be a tight end. Our scoring summary, looks like Charles and I's scorecard. <laughs> Double threes, throw a double bogey in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm the double bogey right yeah, there. And if we, if we put me. some X's where those zeros are. That's me, and I've, I've taken a nine on a hole or two along the way. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Webb, back to punt. Joe Webb has a 78-yarder and a 58-yarder. He's averaging 66 and a half punt, uh, yards per punt today. But now he's into the stiff breeze. We'll see how he handles this. Shanked it, but not a bad idea with Freddie Millen standing back at the 20-yard line. 
Coming up next, Ole Miss and Auburn. Right here on Jefferson Pilot Sports. It's a doubleheader day. That should be a great SEC Western Division clash. Next Saturday, we will see the Commodores and the Rebels. Remember, two years ago, Vanderbilt had won. I forget the number of years that Vincent said went on the road, but they go to Ole Miss and win it in overtime in a thrilling football game. Dennis Francione would love to get out of here with a victory. Well, they head back to Birmingham and play Southern Miss next week. Galloway continues to pile up the rushing yards. He's well over 100 yards today. Hunter Hillenmeyer making the stop for Vanderbilt. Here's Alabama's schedule. Southern Miss and Birmingham. And they have Arkansas. And then uh, it's going to be what I think is going to be a pretty good football game at South Carolina. It's been an excellent football game. That Southern Miss game next week, I know it's not a conference game, but Alabama was embarrassed last year oh, in that yeah. ball game. Southern Miss just stuffed them in Birmingham. A lot of long memories for that one. And Southern Miss is going to have another good team again this year. Hudson picks up the first down on second and one. Beard at the nose tackle spot. Picks up the tackle for the Commodores. I'm on Galloway, by the way. Now, 17 carries, 129 yards today. 21 carries, what was it, 21 carries? Was, he, was his career high? Last week, Last week he tied his career high. Looks like he's headed towards that again. Been a real workhorse. Have not seen much of Brandon Myrie today. No. Number 42, normally the number two tailback. Ray Hudson really moving in solid, number 27. Ray was the man who caught the little... Oh, the hook and lateral. Nearly broke it. Tyler Watts keeps it, and he's close to a first down. He probably has it by about a half a yard. Justin Gibbony in the secondary making the stop. See one tough young man, Tyler Watts, because running the option takes a lot of courage. Between Tyler Watts and Greg Zolman, we've seen two very courageous quarterbacks today. And Tyler Watts isn't always running to the perimeter. He's faking handoffs inside, and then he's attacking the line of scrimmage between tackles. You know, it's almost like he's taking the ball as a right. tailback and hammering it inside. You don't see that very often from your number one trigger guy. Watts rushed last week 18 times, 69 yards. It was 12 of 22 for 204 yards. Had a TD and an interception. Continue to move the change. We've seen both teams move the change today. They just can't put it inside the end zone. The grass in the end zone, but virtually untouched. Yeah, the grounds crew would be happy about that. That's one less thing they have to do this week. <laughs> All he's thinking about everybody. Hey, just, just trying to help them. Just trying to help my brothers out. <laughs> Old Galloway. A couple of yards. Beard, another stop. Beard. Number 92 for Vanderbilt is the nose tackle. The coach has said was just great last week. He had 10 tackles, eight unassisted out of that nose tackle spot. Just a non-stop motor. He had great off-season training regimen. Bulked up. Today has five tackles, one pass defended. Actually tipped the pass at the line of scrimmage. Play action all day. Carter in the middle of the field. Gets tripped up on a nice play from Antoine Bradford. First down, Crimson tied after the gain of 22. Remember, we saw Tyler Watts faking the inside handoff out of the shotgun and then running the ball. Now he fakes it, stays in the pocket, and delivers it on time to Antonio Carter, the guy he hooked up with last week. Very big touchdown against UCLA. Carter finds the dead spot in the zone. Sets down, but they call sitting down, setting up, giving Watts an excellent target, and Watts delivers. Watts is his last five passes. Dropped the football, got it back, and takes it inside the 20. <laughs> oh, boy, that'd have been a hard break. Dan Stricker got one to bounce back to him. About the same spot on the field, Dave, <laughs> if you remember. Right. <laughs> Tyler Watts gets one back also. See the fake inside again, and now he attacks the line of scrimmage. Two plays ago, he attacked the right side. This time, he attacks the left side. Brett Beard, number 92, gets scooped. Ends up coming over to end up making the play, but he, he ended up knocking the ball loose from Watts, although Watts is able to get it back. Here comes the blitz. 
nowhere to go. Vanderbilt brought them all to the linebacker spot. Gibbony also from a safety spot in on the tackle. Andrew Zow on the sidelines, waiting to go last week, stepped in late in the game and did all three of his passes before he took a shot on the touchdown pass. It was a late hit. Notice he's buckled up, Dave. He's ready to go in if his team needs him, but you made a great point about his maturity. Being able to be ready, accept, it, accept his demotion, and not divide his ball club. Great point you made earlier today. 33% on third down conversions for the Tide. Last week they were 31%. They lose a bunch there. Antoine Bradford. Nine tackles today, but none bigger than that. Again, the fake to the tailback, to the one back, gonna fake it, and he's gonna attack the line of scrimmage that way, but Antoine Bradford didn't allow him to get any momentum up. Crashed from his linebacker position. Woody, Woody Woodenhofer had his guys filling all gaps. Bradford unblocked makes the play. The coach just told me yesterday that Bradford's got great closing speed. Boy, did he close it? He closed it in a, in a hurry. That was that sudden, you know, the suddenness of the whole thing. Just boom, he's there. 41-yard field goal attempt. Neil Thomas hits the upright. No good. He hit from 35, 26, 31, but the upright got in the way from 41. Vandy dodges a bullet. 9.57 to go in the ball game. It's still up in the air. Last year, Vanderbilt played Alabama very, very tough. Several plays turned the tide for Alabama. Trailed only by three late in the first half to Vanderbilt, but they had first and goal and couldn't get it in. The Commodores thought they were there. Then late in the third, still trailing 10-7. This Millick's play was called incomplete. Vandy doesn't get the ball in their own 33, and then Bama goes on to win 28-10. Brandon Myrie's 41-yard touchdown run sealed the face. But Alabama and Vanderbilt in the last couple of years have played tough games. This is another good one. Let me tell you something, the Vanderbilt people haven't forgotten that game a year ago. No, nor should they. That's, that's some extra motivation for today. But Alabama right now, the missed field goal, the door's wide open for Vanderbilt to take advantage. Ronald Hatcher, a couple of, maybe three yards. Not McKay Losher on the stop. College football fans, visit Huddle House and play our fantastic football game where every scratch and match card has a winning combination. Thousands of prizes will be awarded, including a new Dodge Ram quad cap truck. Come on in and try your luck. Three-point lead by Alabama. Could be a substitution penalty against Alabama running guys in and out. They allowed him to get off the field, though. Option to Luke Thomas. He might have the first down at the 34. It looks as though they'll give him a good spot. Kentucky trailed early to Ball State, but lead by four at halftime, as it is a first down for the Commodores. Clemson all over Wofford, 31 to 14, that in the fourth quarter. Texas finally opens it up on the Tar Heels. Virginia Tech, 31 seems to be the number. I might play that in the lottery. You might want to put that down. Fresno State on West Bulldogs. Oh my goodness! Give them some respect that they win this one. Put them in the top ten. Wide open and caught. Brandon Smith, the true freshman, bobbled it and bobbled it and bobbled it. And finally catches it down inside the 25-yard line. A gain of 42, but an injured Alabama player back at the Commodore 32-yard line. I can't get a number on that. It's hard to, you, you don't want to speculate until, until we're sure. It looks like Antoine, Antoine Odom, Odom, number 98. See his helmet right there? There it is, 98, Antoine Odom. A sophomore at a, he's in a lot of pain right now. Labatre. What a throw by Greg Zolman, and what a catch by Brandon Smith. He hit him in the right, he hit him in the worst spot, Dave. He hit him in the hands. 
and he bobbled it and bobbled it and bobbled it. And you see the defender, <laughs> Roberto McBride, trying to strip it at the end of the play, but Smith able to gather it in. And they, has youth been served today for Vanderbilt Day? Mathena, Smith, the two freshman wide receivers, they told us they would play. True freshman. True freshman, right? Steve Crosby, Woody Woodenhofer told us they would play. I'm not sure they expected this much out of them. They've been sensational today. That was the big hitting play that Steve Crosby was looking for. Let's see what they do with it. Stricker through his hands. Second down and 10. I think Zolman, a little excited, had a little zip on that. A little juiced up on that one. And also Stricker looking at the defense, I think. I think he saw it running. When you run a slant pattern or a crossing pattern, you run it with courage if you go in there because you could get whacked. See the ball delivered by, by Zolman. Nice throw. See Stricker you looking back that, and seeing Roberto McBride. Dan Stricker usually catches that yeah. ball. Here's Lou Thomas running hard. He gets stood up at the 20 and doesn't go much further than that. Jared Johnson, the first one on the spot for the tide. Thomas, by the way, now closing in on 100 yards. Has 93 rushing yards today after that game. Lou, wide receiver a year ago. Moving back to the tailback spot out of Atlanta, Georgia. Six foot, 215 pounds. Can you feel that this is the best opportunity for Vanderbilt right now, Dave? They've had a number of them during the game, but this is a big one here. Over the middle, Zolman overthrows everybody, and that'll bring up fourth down. Got to kick it. Too much to go for for a first down here. It's one thing to be juiced up. It's another thing to be foolish. I don't see anything but a kick here to try and tie the ball game. Here comes Chuck Foligno. Foligno has hit from 20 and 25. Jimmy Stover tried to hit a 47-yarder but fell short with that. I watched Chuck Polino kick in warm-ups, Dave, and I saw him miss a few from about this distance short. And they say he's the long, you know, he's the short field goal kicker. I wonder if this is about the extent of his range. Is it good? Yes, sir! Chuck Polino, the son of defensive back coach Dino Polino, nails the three-pointer from 38 yards, and we are tied at nine. The Commodore fans, sensing upset. Alabama will have the ball when we come back to Nashville. The Vanderbilt fans, the student body, the band. It's been a long, long time since they knocked off Alabama as the Tide have won 16 straight in this series, the last win came in 1984 at Bryant-Denny Stadium, and the win snapped Alabama's 26-game homecoming winning streak. Here's a look at total yards. Vanderbilt probably finished up with 400 yards of offense today. And Antonio Carter at the five. Carter with a lot of room. Carter. At midfield, brought down at the 45, exactly what the Tide needed to get it rolling. Ian Gaines brought Carter down. You have momentum going your way. You need to keep them down on their end of the field, make them go the long way. Now you've got the ball first and 10 on the plus 45. You know, if you think about it, Dave, here's a great chance for Alabama to take a shot downfield. Get Freddie Millens involved and throw the deep ball to him. Antonio Carter, someone like that, because you have field position on your side. They haven't done much with him at all today. Freddie Millens has one catch. Might want to take that shot. Yeah, Freddie Millens over 200 total Millens yards. down here. Last week has been relatively quiet today. Four Three to the top. Sorry. Wide receivers. And flags come down. Play clock at zero. Still in the game by the offense. Not a good start. No. And the head coach said something to his assistant coach. Yeah, you can't you can't come from the sideline and not be able to get a play in. No, because I mean, what, what, what was that? Hey, can can we not call a play on this? That's why you huddle on the sideline. <laughs> so you have to signal it. Woody calling the defensive assignments. 
for the Vanderbilt Commodores today. It has been since 1997 that he has done that. Right, where he's full-time on the field, involved. He's always known the game plan. Right back to the initial line of scrimmage. Goes Galloway, Morrow Bradford on the stop. Look at Big Doyle Crosby in there. A lot of man and what, Big Doyle. And what he said, what he said, if he never get in a really good shape, he would be their best defensive lineman. But he's never really gotten into excellent physical condition. How about this? Doyle in high school was a McDonald's All-American basketball player. Could look at the size of him now. Yeah, they, they, he had to give up basketball after his sophomore year. He started focusing on football. I wonder if his vertical got jumped as he got bit, got, 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 came down as he got bigger. Sam Collins complete, pop at the 38. That's a couple of yards shy of the first down. Alabama's done what they wanted to do. They put themselves in third and short situation. Yeah, the, the penalty took their ability to go downfield on play one away from them. Nice job by, by Tyler Watts getting square. Ball's a little bit behind Sam Collins, but he makes the catch. Those are the kind of plays that helps your team win. You know, everything doesn't have to, everything can't be perfect every play. Sometimes you have to make the difficult catch, as Sam Collins just did. Big third down and two for the tie. Couple of tight ends. Wide open is Sanders, and he caught it at the 10. First down, Alabama. A gain of 28 yards. Third pass to the tight end all day long, and they just allowed Theo Sanders to just go through them. Someone had him as a defensive assignment. Someone blew it, Dave. It's as simple as that. That was a big defensive breakdown to have a guy that wide open in your secondary. Galloway. Maybe a yard. Antoine Bradford, another stop. He's got 11 tackles today. Watts now. How about these numbers? He was 3 of 8 at the half. 10 of 15 for 128 now. Yeah, 3 of 8 for 45 yards at the half. Things have picked up. But Antoine Bradford, number 41, speaking of picking up, elevating his game as this game continues to progress. And now Vandy in a serious situation where they have to force another field goal from Alabama. My math says he's hit seven straight passes. I, I think your math's pretty darn good. <laughs> Even Florida State math figured that out. Tyler <laughs> Watts to the end zone, his first incompletion. In his last him. eight attempts. You jinxed him, big fella. I did. Still pretty good. Still seven pretty good. Eight. Seven to eight, but that was the one that would have scored if Theo Sanders yeah. was open on this play. Number 89. Sanders will come, will come across, see him coming across right here. He's wide open, Dave. Ball sails on him. Had a little pressure from Nate Morrow, number 40, the linebacker, but that's one Watts would love to have back, wouldn't he? Four of 11 and third down conversions. Third and nine, pressure coming again. Lofton to the end zone. Just out of the reach of Triandis Luke. And that'll bring up Fourth down and nine, and they'll have to kick it away. Your Woody Wooden Hopper, you're applauding your defense, but you're telling them not to relax on this play. You don't want to give up a fake in this situation. Yeah, you don't want to give up a fake because Alabama would love to have a touchdown to put a little gap between them and Vanderbilt. But you play safe as your one rusher, and don't let anyone slip downfield on you. Thomas. Good try. 27. He hit the upright from 41. No upright was going to stop that. He hammered it through the goalpost. And that gives the tie to three-point advantage. We have got five minutes and one second remaining in what has been a thrilling affair here in Nashville. Back after a word from your local station. SEC football has been brought to you by the Cat Rental Store, where you can rent a whole lot more.
and by the thousands of drink combinations at Sonic, America's drive-in. Neil Thomas has given Alabama all 12 of their points today. Vanderbilts have also come by way of the field goal. Lane Bearden will kick off, however. Lane Bearden does the punting for the Crimson Tide. Ball is teed up at the 35. Back to receive is Ronald Hatcher and Jason Mathena. And Hatcher will take it out four yards deep. Hatcher out over the 20 to the 23-yard line. That's where Vanderbilt will have it with 4.51 to go in the ball game. Jason Rawls on the stop for the Crimson Tide. Four field goals, by the way, for Neil Thomas, a career high. Now Greg Zolman, 15 of 29, 214 yards. He's a good player, a good leader for Vanderbilt. 25 straight starts tells you something. It's not because he hasn't been pressed by other people. He's managed to hold on to his job. Williams, out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. Coming up next, Ole Miss and Auburn, the Rebels, the Tigers from Jordan-Hare Stadium. Ole Miss, two years ago, traveled to the Plains and shocked Auburn in Tommy Tuberville's first game against his old school. Right. Went, uh, went down to the wire, and the Rebels pulled it off in overtime. That was a heck of a ball game. Good. Williams again. They need to get to the 33-yard line for a first down. A flag is down on the field. The spot's going to be right at the first down marker, but it appears that that won't matter. Face mask. Says it's probably, was a, that's a five-yard penalty on, on that face yes. mask, not the 15-yard personal foul face mask. He must have felt like he got his hand on the mask, but was also trying to get it off. It wasn't with a violent, violent one where he yanked his head around. So only five instead of 15. Alabama's been only been penalized three times today for 25 yards. Oh, what a big hit! Is that Brooks Daniels? Yes, yes it was. It was. <laughs> you know, Brooks isn't very big. 6'2", 200 out of Jasper, Florida. Just a sophomore, but he put a big hit right there on Williams. He brought all his momentum with him. Carl Torbush, the mastermind of the Alabama defense, putting together another pressure scheme. And second and long, see what he comes up with for the Bama defense. Down nine, four wideouts in the game. Williams stays in the block. Zolman fires, has a man. Smith at the 42-yard line of Alabama. First down, Commodores, Miles on the stop. What a big completion, and Smith has stepped up big as a true freshman. Talk about coming of age, Smith to come right here. What a great throw by Zolman, playing against the zone of Alabama. Number four on the play for Alabama, Gerald Dixon was playing deep outside part of the zone. Reggie Miles, number 23, playing on the inside part. Found the dead spot, curled inside, and Zolman delivered it right on time. And we're looking at this Vanderbilt team coming in this game day. You wouldn't have thought this was going to happen after what happened with them last week. William Spence, no gain. Brooks Daniels again. That's nine stops today for Brooks Daniel. Daniels, just a sophomore. Salim Rashid also went on the stop. If you think about it, Dave, Alabama's lost to UCLA last week. That's one that people look at and say, well, that was UCLA. For Vanderbilt, unfortunately, it was Middle Tennessee State. And people think to themselves, how could you lose to Middle Tennessee? They're pretty good, but people don't know it. So that's a much more crushing defeat for them. Solman. Oh. Stricker, the intended receiver, had Victor Ellis paid attention to the ball instead of the receiver just that moment, he would have had himself a, a big interception. 
Yeah, not the way a linebacker thinks. He's thinking about going through a receiver. Instead of picking, you know, I'll go through him, defensive back, you go get the ball. Victor Ellis' his father, yeah. Lieutenant Colonel Victor Ellis Sr., just retired. Met him during media days. From the Army on August 30th, so he could watch his son play some football for the tie. Out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, is Victor Ellis. And he was there media days recording it with the video camera. Solman steps up, has some time, overthrows his receiver. That was not one of Zolman's better passes. Had a little float on it. Yeah, that was, that was one that was one, one he'd like to have back, and they're gonna have to do something with the clock situation here. Because the clock shows the clock shows 1955. And I don't think that's what how much time's left. <laughs> I think that's gonna be off. That's why the official, the referee, keeps it on the field. Yeah, our boys at Auburn would be a little disappointed with that, <laughs> with that. That, that. That could hurt their open a little bit. <laughs> And you know Dave Rowe, he's <laughs> got to get his open on the air. If Dave Rowe doesn't get his open. Two minutes and three seconds. Two minutes and three seconds on the reset. Yeah, no open for Dave. It's a long day for David Steele, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sure we'll hear about that later. Oh, we'll yeah. oh yeah, that's going to come back. Fourth down, Dave. No choice here. Vanderbilt has a couple of timeouts remaining. They will use one of them right now. They went for it earlier today, and Zolman ran the option around the left side of the offensive line, picked up the first down. 2.03 remaining in the game. You know what's somewhat interesting there, Dave, is that they had that time, as we see coming up next, Ole Miss against Auburn, you know, if we follow our game, but they had all that time with getting the clock set, and they still don't get set. You know, that's the tough part. They end up still having to use a timeout. Well, it's time now to look at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the Game, which is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And Vanderbilt's first drive of the game. They march it all the way down the field. They actually had to go from their own two and a half yard line because of penalties. They marched it all the way down and had to settle on a Chuck Foligno 20 yard field goal at eight up seven and a half minutes on the clock. That's our BMW ultimate drive of the game. But they would love to have one more drive that could be the ultimate drive. And there is Antoine Odom. Antoine Odom with the bad shoulder. We saw him leave the game earlier. It was diagnosed with sleep apnea in the spring. You don't want that. They fixed it. He said it's changed his whole life. It's changed him as a person and everything. And let's see if this fourth down conversion will change Vanderbilt. His future on the football field. Coming out of a timeout, and they're still confused about where to line up, Dave. Zillman steps up. Dodges the pressure over the middle. Caught! First down, Dan Stricker. Greg Zolman. Patient, patient, let it develop. Let it develop and made the play. And when in doubt, in a pressure situation, where do you go? You call basketball all the time for Dave. What do, you, what do they do in basketball? Put the ball in the hands of their best player, running the play that he runs best. This time, Greg Zolman had put it in the hands of their quarterback to his best receiver. Come up with a huge first down. Overtime is definitely an option. Double pass. Back over to Zolman. He dropped it. He would have scored a touchdown. Oh, my goodness. The Phantom Raider by Steve Crosby tried it out. You can't get it set up any better than that. <laughs> it just doesn't get any easier, any more open. Look at Steve Crosby. What do I have to I get him to the green? I can't punt for him. You got to complete the play. He said. He had nothing to lose with his offensive yeah. package today. And, and he's showing it all today. Oh, they had it set up down the near side. Could have waltzed. Had two blockers in front. Zolman. Zolman scrambling. Needs a block. Runs out of bounds. With 123 on the clock. Picked up a couple of yards. Roberto McBride ran him out of bounds. It looked as though he had a... 
And Williams standing right in front of him and could have picked up a first down. Yeah, did they ended up not using it that way. Do you know what I like about Vanderbilt right now, Dave? Is that that play could have totally deflated them. They could have just yeah. gone, and you could have seen a whole sag on the sidelines. You're not seeing that. You're seeing Vanderbilt staying with it despite the trouble they had last week and losing Middle Tennessee State. They're going toe to toe with Bama today. Here's a huge third down conversion, seven for 16 during the game today. Pretty good numbers for Vanderbilt today, third down conversions. The fake handoff. Zolman hit as he throws to the end zone, batted away. Herschel Bolden on the coverage, intended for Brandon Smith. Zolman got rocked as he let it go, and with 118 to go in the ball game, Vanderbilt is going to try to tie this up and send it to overtime. Greg Zolman took a heck of a shot, and this is why Alabama is happy Kendall Moorhead's back, number 54, he and, and, and Naughton Lozier. You know, they, they put all the pressure on, 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 on the quarterback on that play. So Moorhead and then and Naughton McKay Lozier. Well, here, here's, Chuck, the completion. here's Chuck Foligno. Will try from 37 to tie it up. The kick is up. It is no good. And Alabama erupts in celebration. And Vanderbilt misses a golden opportunity. Neil Thomas hits four times today. A career high. Chuck Foligno could only match him with three. Snap was good. The hold was good. He didn't get a whole lot on that, Dave. You know, it's almost as if he chunked it a little bit because he couldn't have asked for a better setup for a left-footed kicker, kicking it that way. You know, the way the, way the ball would hook for him, he pulled it a little bit. Now Alabama's going to try and run out the clock. What is it about the Crimson Tide at Vanderbilt? This is, this is what, 16 straight this at be, Vanderbilt? This will be Just 17 at Vanderbilt. straight Vanderbilt. in this series, 16 straight, straight here. here. The, 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 there was a loss in 1993 in the record books that Alabama had to forfeit because of some, some allegations. But on the field, as you just said, 17 straight, 16 straight here. The last win came in, the last win was in 1984. The last win here at Vanderbilt, Watson Brown engineered that victory in 1969. And this was the deck. This they, was the deck. They had the double pass it, set up. He, he's got a chance to walk in. He had, he had an escort on the other side. It wasn't the best pass in the world from Stricker, but it didn't need to be. It just needed to be up in the air. And Greg Zolman will unfortunately replay that over and over and over. You know, guys played a heck of a game today. It's unfortunate it comes down to that. And oh man. Zolman, gallant effort. I mean, really. Uh, had a fourth down, nine situation, stepped in the stepped pocket. up and stuck it to Dan Stricker. Remember the fourth down run in the first half? Yep. On the option, we courageously dove for the first down and got it. Guy takes hits all the time and continues to make plays. It's unfortunate that's the play that people are going to remember today. 108. Not a lot Vanderbilt can do. They just burned their last time out. Ahmad Galloway picks up three yards. Ahmad Galloway has been a workhorse today, Charles. I mean, tip your cap to that man on a hot, humid day. A career high, 23 carries. He has run for 142 yards, 43 yards after that last pickup. And has really done a job. I mean, he is... Uh, they said coming into the spring and the fall practice that Ahmad was the leader back there among the running backs and came back focused, ready for a big season, and uh, has stepped it up. 143 yards for Ahmad, and look at that average, 6.2. And Ray Hudson did a nice job carrying the football as well. Yeah, we heard Dennis Franchoni on our conference call with him spark up when you mentioned the name Ray Hudson. He said, Coach, what about Ray Hudson any more time? He said, did you see that, that hook and lateral play? Did you see that? He almost broke that. He could feel 
how he felt. He said, we're going to give him a lot more opportunities, and he did that today, and you're right, he stepped in well. Neil Thomas, the junior out of Clinton, Mississippi, the hero in this one. Dennis Franchoni picks up his first win as an Alabama head football coach. They beat Vanderbilt in a hard-fought SEC war. 12 to 9, our final score for Dave Baker. Charles Davis, I'm Dave Neal. So long, everybody, from Nashville. Ole Miss and Auburn coming your way next. That should be a good one. You have been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports, exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference football. We'll see you down the road.